Oh. Yeah, there you go. You got to unmute. You, somebody hit the red button there. I don't know. Is that one muted too? Is it no. Red or blue? We're we should be good now. We're working now. All right. We'll, we'll, okay. I'll repeat that. Uh, also, this meeting is uh, the main purpose of this meeting is to conduct interviews for applicants for the town administrator's position. Before that, we have some uh, housekeeping to do. So uh, first, we have the minutes from December 4th, 2023. Text, that was the tax classification hearing in the annual budget uh, off where we spoke to the different departments are planning for the budget process. We voted on the tax work off program. And uh, I guess that's it. Motion to approve December 4th. Second. So any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And the minutes for December 18th, 2023. What do we have here? We have a discussion with the planning board, the master plan to point person to the master plan committee. Entertainment licenses and some one day permits, a request by a theater guild. Uh, we spoke to tie in bond regarding uh, the water uh, commission project. Uh, and what do we have here? Oh, the, uh, the town administrator's report. I was not in attendance for this meeting. So I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, second. Any further discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, just a brief update while we're here. The uh, propane truck has been removed. Uh, just before I got here, it was in the process of being removed. Okay. I was upright and I was being loaded onto the uh, tow truck. Uh, and the neighbor, the road was opened up, and the um, um, resident who was evacuated uh, was able to come home. We're going to work on getting home from the scene. I remember she was at. No injuries. No injuries. No. No. It's just an unfortunate icy condition situation. Were there any pauses in the uh, school? You know, obviously. Not that I know of. Not that I know of. No. No. I mean, it was a good road cut off the way we had South Munson Road, Fresher Road. Right. You can get around that whole area. So everything worked out very well. Thank you. So the process we have three and we have three applicants we're going to interview. Uh, the board will ask some questions. Uh, they, I, no one else will be allowed to ask questions at this time except the, the consultant, uh, Mr. Bernie Lynch. And uh, we'll go through each one and then the board will uh, consider it. Uh, individually and we'll meet on january 29th and hopefully discuss it then and to make a decision okay so we're running a little ahead uh is bob bob are you there you want to talk about the cable contract yeah. is he talking he's talking but i don't hear him bob's not on right now have himself muted you're under Bob right now, that level. Oh. So how does oh, he's not okay. All right. Yeah. I think you want it not crossed. Right. Well, let's move along. <laughs> that first applicant here, do you know where he is? All right. All right. This is, uh, Chris Caputo is the first applicant. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Chris, run up. Have a seat. Hi, Chris. The first applicant is Chris Caputo. John Flynn. Chris Caputo. I'm Chris Caputo. 
First of all, thank you for coming in. Thank you for your interest in the town of Hamden. Uh, we appreciate your consideration to safe drive over here from Agalom. Well, I live in Springfield. It's only 15 minutes from my house, so there you go. Uh, so the process we're going to do is I'm going to ask some questions, and then I'll have the board members follow up on any particular thing they're in that particular category. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, like I said before, uh, we'll make it. We'll thinking well, making a decision on January 29th. We meet in January, meeting January 29th. Okay. So once again, thank you. Uh, I'd like to just point out there's a few people here. If they'd introduce themselves, and there was a signing sheet, Lauren, okay. as they have passed around. Jane Bedinkwitz, Board of Health. Scott Conley, Police Chief. I'm a Hatch resident. And Chairman of the Ambulance Committee and Chairman of the Government and Study Committee. I'm just a resident. <laughs> and, on, and on Zoom, on Zoom we have John Plaster, who's Chairman of the Water Commission, mm -hmm. and Wendell Holbert, who's the Building Inspector, is on there too. Joanne's on too. And Joanne and Fiore for the planning work. And Michelle. Oh, and Michelle Boudreau, who was uh, Assistant Treasurer and also Chairman of the Regional School Committee. Okay. Okay. And it's being, it's being uh, recorded for Zoom. So, mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> all the things that go with that. All right. So, give us a, can you give us a short description of your professional experience and take a couple of minutes to tell us what makes you think the town of Hamlet would be a good fit? Sure. So, um, I was born and raised in Springfield, went to Springfield Public Schools, got my uh, bachelor's of science in finance from Bentley University. I graduated in 2009, right during that economic downturn. Um, <clears throat> I got a temporary position with the city of Springfield. They were converting their payroll from ADP to Munis at the time. It was a four month appointment. So after that temporary appointment, I was hired by the office of the controller. So. Springfield's a little unique in that they don't have a town accountant or city auditor. They have a comptroller and a director of internal audit. That position is actually split. It's one of the many special legislation pieces they have. So essentially, I worked in your accounting, uh, what's similar to your accounting office as a financial accountant. Um, I did forecasting for the comptroller. I helped him uh, prep for reports that he would go to city council. He gives a monthly financial report. This is how the city's doing. I helped him prepare that. I also uh, overviewed. Um, all the town's receivables from the accounting um, side, uh, reconciled them with the treasurer's office. Um, after that, I went to the health department. Um, I was the financial analyst for the health services for the homeless program. I managed that uh, grant. It was a few million dollars. Um, I did all the federal reporting with it, made sure all the expenses were in compliance with the grant. Um, we actually had a federal audit when I was there and um, all the financial portions of the audit was a pass. Um, after that, um, I got a credible opportunity to go to the town of Longmeadow. Um, I was the assistant town accountant there. I worked under the town accountant and the finance director, Paul Pesterzik, who I also know is treasurer of the Scanic Valley Regional Health Trust, which Hamden is a part of. Um, then after Ag or in Longmeadow, my boss was only six years older than me. He wasn't planning on applying for Paul's job when he applied. So if I wanted to move up and become a department head, I had to leave. So Westfield City Auditor retired. I applied to Westfield, was in Westfield. I went through three mayors in 18 months. I had Mayor Sullivan, who then who resigned to go take a job with the state, uh, acting Mayor Figgy, and then I had Mayor Hummison after the election. Very interesting, three very different personalities. There, um, I ran the audit department, all payables. That's very similar to your accounting department. Um, I also did the citywide budget there, uh, helped prep it, um, advised the mayor on certain things. Okay, what do you, I sat down with the mayor. Okay, what's your goal? What, what are you looking for for a tax increase? Can we do it? Can we not do it? These are our fixed expenditures, you know, our retirement, our health insurance, um, all employee base. This is where your vacant positions are. If we have to maybe cut one of those to balance it, we didn't. Um, that was my first budget with Mayor Sullivan. My second budget was during COVID with Mayor Hummison, where every single time I looked at the numbers, it got worse and worse and worse. Um, 
we ended up passing our COVID budget um, with some free cash. Uh, after that budget was passed, I, Mayor Sarno personally called me and personally offered me the treasurer collector position in Springfield. Um, their treasurer collector uh, left to go to East Long Meadow to be the finance director, called me personally, offered me the job, so I accept it. Very hard to turn down uh, Mayor Sarno when he personally calls you. <laughs> um, was the in charge of a very public facing department during COVID. We were we remained open to the public the entire time of my tenure there. We never closed once during COVID. Um, we accepted all tax payments. We had people walk in if they didn't want to leave something in our drop box. We would walk in, wait on them. Um, so collector collecting taxes. Then treasurer side, I also invested all of our cash. Um, rates were not that great at that point. So wasn't that competitive. I just had to make sure I was within the legal compliances of investing. There's several legal um, instances of you can only be 60% of a bank's collateralized um, securities or have them fully insure your money with them. So I have a relationship with several banks there. Um, once again there, I wanted, I missed doing a citywide budget. Um, I ran my department's budget. I did a little bit with the revenue side there. Um, so I left to go to Agawam where I'm currently employed. Um, my title is treasurer collector. I do a lot of duties of a finance director without the title. I do the city or the townwide budget, um, sit, do forecast with the um, departments. If a department is looking for money because, oh crap, something broke, something happened. We have a roof leak. I didn't account for this. How can I get it? Where can I get it? I meet with the departments with that. Um, also with that budget, we're currently in our budget process now. I'll be sitting down with new Mayor Johnson to see what his budget priorities are. Um, I also sit on the, Agawam's looking to get a new high school. Um, so I'm on that committee. High schools are a lot more expensive than they used to be. Um, our price tag is projected to be 231 million for a new high school. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, what happened to 100 million? Got you a nice high school. Um, and then I actually thought um, Administrator Markle had already retired and you guys already found his successor. So I was pleasantly surprised that um, he hadn't yet left. And, you know, I, I like Hamden. It's very close to my house. Um, I used to go to Mountain View as a kid. Um, my cousin owned it. I sold it probably 10 years ago. Um, I have a good relationship with Munson Banks CEO. I do a lot of business with them uh, as the treasurer, both in Springfield and Agawam. Um, I just like Hamden. It's very nice, very scenic, nice small town feel. Um, your board of selectmen, you gentlemen, are very stable. I believe there's well, since, well, in terms of personal, yes. Um, I believe. Selectman Villameno, um, who has passed, is the only turnover you guys had in the last 10 or 15 years, for the most part. No. Okay, I'm mistaken that. <laughs> but his, he was on the board, it was Davin, uh, Mr. Davenport, yourself, and Selectman Villameno for years. No, I actually believe. Don replaced Vinny. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, then, uh, so. and Craig came in uh, two years ago? Almost three. Almost great. He's wow. Sure, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. He's out of work. No. <laughs> so I, I got a follow-up question to that. Yep. Um, you, you mentioned you know a little bit about Hamden. You live in Springfield, close by. Yep. Um, I'm assuming you've done a little bit of advanced scouting on Hamden, and you've probably seen some of our projects or some of the things we have ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel that you would be able to advance those interests that we have? So I know your biggest one, you guys just appointed a fire building committee to look at your fire station. Um, so in terms of, you're probably looking at an exclusion for that vote because your um, budget's only 16 million. That's, I believe I saw that was a $3 million project. Correct me if I'm wrong, was your estimate? There's varying numbers. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I could probably sit down with the chief, um, the building committee, look at that. Um, 
You're, I mean, right now the rates are starting to come down from bonding. I just sold a band in Agawam. The rate was far lower than I was expecting. Mm. It was um, under three and a half percent, which I was shocked at. And it was a, it's a band that we're due, we're selling February and it's coming due in October. So I was expecting it to be closer to four and a half. Mm. So I was pleasantly surprised with that. Who are you using mostly for your? We I mean, use most of ours have been Eastern Bank and just you know I don't know what year. So we have a financial advisor, um, Unibank Financial Services Advisory Services, and um, TD Securities is the one who bought the note. Okay. Before that, we had um, Seed Company bought our last two notes. Yeah. It's a good number in this time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a sixteen point five million dollar issuance. Yeah. We take that. Out. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I, if, if I may, I just yeah. real very well versed in financial matters. Mm -hmm. um, why do I be a town administrator? Town administrator, um, I've always found my boss's position, whether it was the mayor or a manager, just fascinating in that you get to see everything and touch everything DPW, fire, police, health, everything. As much as I like numbers, I kind of like the whole picture as well. If I could follow up then, yeah, that yeah. dovetails into my question. Mm -hmm. How do you envision, you know, you talk about the closeness here down by the former Gus and Paul, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, we missed that rye sandwich that we've done. Mm -hmm. uh, anyhow, how do you see your, your presentation? How would you envision yourself in the town administrator role? Taking what you've learned in your various roles as, you know, heck, your last department had 15 people. Yep. How would you bring that forth to a much more disparate you know, group of people. How would you envision how you would bring TA? So I know um, a lot of the appointments for department heads in Hamden rests with the Board of Selectmen. I know you have a government study committee. You may change certain things. I know um, your treasurer, your clerk, and your collector are all elected. I don't know if you guys are considering changing those to appointed positions or not, but with elected positions, you guys have been fortunate where Eva and Dick are very, very good at what they do, and their assistants are also very, very good at what they do. Um, I would look to make sure if they were to leave and the assistants walked out the door at the same time, hopefully that doesn't happen, I would look to try to assist in bringing in at least the good assistants, and then if you switched it, those from elected to appointed, trying to bring in good department heads as well. Um, I know Springfield um, has a lot of people you could potentially hire from. Um, there are people out there, it's just a matter of finding them. Mm -hmm. How do you envision the role of TA in coordination with the Board of Selectmen? I know Bernie has talked about different towns have strong TA models, co-TA models, if you will, with the Board. Mm -hmm. Which do you envision? So I know right now, uh, with Hamden, it's basically the Board of Selectmen says, we want X, Y, Z, town administrator, you're the day-to-day, -day, you go do it. Mm -hmm. So I'd be fine with that. If you guys wanted to change the role and make it more of a stronger town administrator, I'd be fine with that. Mm -hmm. um, if we did switch it where the town administrator had more power of appointing all that, I would look to meet with the select board chair regularly mm -hmm. on top of the, I believe you guys meet weekly here. Mm -hmm just to give them a heads up, okay, this is what's going on, this is what we're seeing, this is what I have in the pipeline, what do you think? Because you guys are gonna have to help me sell it politically and a good relationship is best for everybody. What, what uh, give us a, some, some examples, describe your management style, you know, like uh, what would it look like, especially, and this kind of goes to John's question, in a decentralized organization, we have a lot of, Boards and commissions that you know were fairly independent. Yes, so I would say just being visible within the departments. That's something you want to do. Come through. Um, sometimes just popping in, you find out stuff you wouldn't normally find. Um, I would also try to potentially have department monthly head uh, monthly department head meetings just to see what's ever what's going on. And then it's having been in Agawam where we have very regular department head meetings. Mm -hmm. It's very very interesting to just see how one department head will bring up something and then like DPW or building or police will be like, oh yeah, we did, we knew this, this, and this was also engaged with that. It, just that form of communication is very good. I try to be hands off and let the people work. I don't try to micromanage 
if I don't have to, I can, but I prefer not to. That's just not my style. If I micromanaged everybody, I wouldn't have time to do the bigger things that the board would be directing for me. Greg, give me a little. Um, yeah. In, in the role of town administrator, and you talked about, we talked about the decentralizing of the organizations, um, there will be some type of mentoring that would be required because you are going to need to, some, some people, the changeover, there's a lot of changeover yep. in, in lower departments that would probably want some guidance. Mm -hmm. How would you present your leadership style with them to bring them up to speed if need to be or work with them in hand in hand? So it would depend upon the department and what exactly the need was. It would depend upon if the whole department's turning over, if it's just the head and maybe the assistant whose experience is still there. Maybe there's experienced clerical staff that can be leaned on. It could be something where I do it personally. It could be something where I reach out to um, somebody I know in another community to maybe assist. It would depend upon each situation because each situation would probably be very unique in and of itself. One quick question. No, one thing that Bob has been capitalizing on funding, yep. grant, is a Rolodex that can't be beat. Yes. What's your experience with getting additional funding from outside? So, um, most of what I've done was in most of my grants is in the health department um, when I worked in Springfield. We worked very hand in hand with our local hospitals to get funding either from them or we were the pass through from the feds, the state, whatever. I know in Agawam, a lot of our procurement officer is our point person on that, and she works a lot with our legislative delegation in getting grants. She's on the PVPC emails to try to get opportunities that way. I mean, I know those aren't as much as potentially an earmark from the state. I know um, the state rep out here is starting to get much more senior than he has been because of the turnover at the state house. So mm -hmm. you could potentially rely on him to get earmarks, hopefully. Um, the state budget doesn't crash too much in the next few years. I know they've already done some nice 9C cuts. Mm -hmm. um, my only fear with grants is as the economy downturns, they kind of dry up. Mm -hmm. Well, Bob has had a great relationship by getting federal grants as yes. well. Yeah. So obviously you probably have a decent relationship with Representative Neal, who I think has to be one of the top three, four senior guys in the House at this mm -hmm. point. He was chair of House and Means, Ways and Means at one time. So, you know, to use that contact level, that's where we've been pretty fortunate with Bob at this point. Yes. Do you think you also have to say more about contacts? Probably not nearly as much as Bob. Not Bob has. Bob. You've established them <laughs> in your previous role. Yes. Yeah. You, you, you've had several supervisory roles, five, I think five people one time, some places mm -hmm. 15 and another. Mm -hmm. Were they union or non-union? So right now in Agawam, we're unique where everybody's in a union, even me. Um, so I've had to deal, so all my people who are, who I supervise are all in the clerical union, I'm in the admin union. And then in Springfield, I had a mix. I had some people in the clerical union, some people who are non-bargaining, and it's very, very different, the rules between the bargaining, non-bargaining of them. And how did, how did they handle human resources management or how did you handle it if there was an issue with an employee? Depend upon what the issue is. Um, every issue is very different. Sometimes it's music in the office, sometimes it's candles, but basically you just have to treat everybody exactly the same. And then, and then it is uh, Long Meadow, did they have a human resources department? Yes, they did. Right. Uh, projects. I mean, we got several major projects, capital projects, thinking about at least the uh, senior center, the fire department. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this building needs a lot of work. We have a water project that we need to do. Uh, infrastructure. What? Well, infrastructure, well, infrastructure, the road, stuff like that. Fiber optic. <laughs> yep. We got all those coming down the road. Um, What's your experience with managing those kind of projects? So right now in Agawam, we're looking at a new high school. We're building a new police station. Um, what else did I? We uh, we have a park rehabbing, making it more passive recreation. Whereas right now it's basically all woodland. Um, like I said, it's just making sure you're on top of the financing portion of it, and then working with 
the political body to make sure it can sell politically too. How, how, how much is the police station going for? So uh, the original bond on it was 11.9 million. We got in, we saw that, guess what? There's more that has to be done. So we went back for an additional authorization of 2 million, which I don't think we're going to need, but um, we were sitting with the mayor of procurement and several people involved in the project and we decided to ask for potentially more than we would need just in case there's a, oh, guess what else we found? Mm -hmm. So we only went back once, got it once, and if we don't borrow the extra two million, we can just have council rescind the authorization of whatever we don't borrow. So you're not rehabbing your building new at a new site? It's the old hub building at 1070 Suffolk Street. They're completely right. gutting the building and rebuilding it. And then they have to do paving, securing it with holding cells, mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. Yeah, we're all set. We have a fairly new state. Yes. We don't need a new one. <laughs> no, we're set. Thanks, <laughs> So what, Mr. Chairman, if I, if I could, what's been your specific, your specific role with these projects? You, you gave us a listing of the projects that are taking place in Agawam there, but in terms of your participation in those, uh, I understand your, your role is, in, you know, handling the financing and the bonding of those, mm -hmm. but in terms of uh, the the day to day decisions about uh, in working with the architects, working with the contractors, uh, troubleshooting when delays come up. Uh, how much are you involved? Have you been involved with that type of work? So other than so in terms of the architect, the police station was designed before I even started the Tuckahoe project that had been in uh, design phase for years before I was started. Um, so those, it's pretty much financing. Okay, how's the money looking? What do I need to borrow? Um, getting all their documentation to submit for it. Um, the high school is a little more involved because we just started that design. So we're meeting every, we were meeting every other week. Now we're down every three weeks to try to get, okay, this is what it looks like. This is the price per square foot. This is what we're doing. If we take out X, Y, Z, okay, where else are we gonna put it? Do we have to rehab it? Is it a build new? Okay. So much more hands-on on a high school project. Because it's currently in process. Uh, in your On your resume, it says here that you, uh, you're you creating the town's five-year capital plan yes. uh, in Agawam. Um, this is your first. Uh, you didn't have that responsibility elsewhere. What's the criteria by which you're What's the process by which you're uh, developing that capital plan? So um, part part of our budget memo is tell us your capital needs for the next five years. Some departments, like our clerk, mm -hmm. will have nothing. Right. He already has his new voting machines. Um, somebody like fire, it's okay, I need a new roof. I'm going to need new, two new pumper trucks, um, whatever the cost of those are. Um, I need ambulances, all that. And it's just, okay, he's asking for them on this schedule. Do we think it's possible for that? I'll, we'll t discuss that with the mayor. We actually have a committee that I'm on that it's okay. Do we think this is possible? What's the lead time on it? Um, like for instance, this past year, a ladder truck, a tower ladder truck, there's an 18 month lead time on. Right. So, which is mind boggling to me. So how are you, how are you establishing the financial plan to uh, fund those pr capital projects? So I sit down with the mayor and I say, I have a certain rule of thumb. If it's 250,000 to 50,000, we should try to pay cash. We're a $120 million budget to try to pay cash for those, whether it's out of the ambulance fund, free cash, a direct appropriation. Anything over that, okay, we take it case by case. What's the useful life of it? Is it um, a fire truck that should last us 20 years? Is it a DPW dump truck where it's gonna get the crap beat out of it with all the snow plowing and winter things? Okay, oh, what's the cost of it? If it's 300,000, it's a big dump truck, I would recommend to the mayor we would pay cash for it because the useful life isn't as long. A fire truck, um, I'm trying to get the town into the, mo the motion we create a capital stabilization fund. Okay, we're gonna make a direct appropriation into it when the chief comes to us and says, guess what? It's year five of my 20 year fleet, fleet maintenance. I need a new truck. We say, okay, we have capital stabilization. We've been socking the money away. We'll take, do a transfer out, pay cash for them now. Do you, um, in terms of the, do you have some type of um, standard by which you um, 
limit how much you spend on capital in a given year? It depends upon how the rest of the operating budget's looking. It depends upon what's in the pipeline. Um, the mayor will have his ideas and suggestions that him and I will go back and forth on. We have been ramping up our capital spending um, just because, as been mentioned by the select board, <clears throat> there's just a lot that needs to get done now. I have a two-part question. Mm -hmm. um, it says you're the chair of the town's health trust. Yep. How many people are under you as being the chairman? So that's just chair of the board. It's a board of five. Board of five. I'm chair by ordinance. Okay. Can you explain your um, your responsibilities as chair and your your leadership within the team? Sure. So um, I worked a lot with our hub is our consultant for our health insurance reviewing claims. Um, it's mostly down to our rates. Um, How's our claims tracking? What's the consultant recommending? What's the mayor want? What's our budget probably going to look like? So just trying to figure out all that financing and threading that very, very fine line to, okay, so our consultant's saying X, mayor wants a second one, and then I think it's going to be this number, or what can we sell? Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, our health insurance plans are very well. We have Blue Cross Blue Shield. We have a high deductible plan, a very good family plan. We have a PPO plan, and they're all, depending on which plan you are, your um, share could be different, what the town pays versus what you pay. Um, we're probably not going to touch that portion of it. Most of my role is just, okay, rates, what do we think? What's best for the trust? What's best politically? And then what's best for our budget, trying to balance that three-ring circus, for lack of a better term. What is the share the employees pay generally? Um, so our most um, used plan is 70-30. Town pays 70%, employee pays 30. We have one plan that's 50-50. It's a PPO plan. There's only one or two employees on it. So you're self-insured? Yes. Uh, do, do you... Um, uh, and you use Hub to monitor that. Have you ever um, considered going a full premium with a? Uh... They did before I got there, and one of those things we've done it so recently. I wouldn't entertain on doing that at this time. Maybe in three, four, five years, we'd look at it again just to see how the trust is trending. If we did go full premium, if we wanted to join GIC, maybe, or if we wanted to regionalize, see if Southwick wants to join. I know. Right. Westfield probably would not because they have a very healthy trust. I was on the trust there as well as the auditor. As you said, you have experience with you know, how Paul runs the Skank Valley and you know, with such a small, mm -hmm. I want to say population in the plan, being part of the larger thing helps our rates. Yes. The biggest issue we've had in the past few years, and Don can certainly speak to that, is the retirement. Yes. Yeah, which has been, a challenge. <laughs> yes, I got our appropriation went up nine hundred thousand from fiscal twenty four to twenty five. Nine percent or whatever, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you just mentioned, the state. I remember seeing a presentation by uh, Dean Roginus a few years back about potentially joining the state plan yeah. instead. And uh, I don't know if that's something you've experienced with looking at the different plans out there. With the health insurance? No, the retirement. So the retirement, I would probably recommend against doing that because I think Hampton County is better funded than parts of the state. I know the state's been um, not performing as well as other health and or um, retirement systems. I think we get up to our, what is it, 36 or 37? We're going to get up to our funding yeah, finally 30, at 9%. 30, 30, 30, 30. Yeah. It's getting to the point where they're going to have to push out that schedule. Springfield's going up 9.2%. They're 33% funding. It's legit getting to the point where I was, when I was treasurer, I was looking at the fact of, okay, it's going to get to the point where our payments more than cash I have in the bank. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to figure something out with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about our OPED yeah. at that point, yeah. Fortunately, right now, with such a small population and good cash reserves, we don't have it. Yeah. We don't have the need to actually fund an OPED that's separate than our stabilization mm -hmm. fund at this point. Just call it one big pot, if you will. Yes. But you do need to manage that type of thing. Mm -hmm. What percentage technically is geared towards that? You know, we have retirees, buybacks, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so. 
The, one of the issues we have in town and all the small towns is, is getting people to participate. Mm -hmm. uh, any ideas? <laughs> what type of incentives would you offer? <laughs> Posters, <laughs> like the banks? So, Cookies. I know, I remember my drive-in every single day in Longmeadow, both on Route 5 and then on Bliss here, uh, Shaker and East Longmeadow. Mm -hmm. They always had one of the bright traffic signs, town meeting on X date at X time. Um, sometimes we'd have 300 people, sometimes it'd be 100. Mm -hmm. Depends upon what's on, what people are interested in. Um, I mean, I wish there was a golden ticket for that. Mm -hmm. If I had it, I would be glad to share it, but other than just making people aware of it, mm -hmm. I don't know what else no. you could do other than that. What do you see as a difference between working for the mayor or for the selectmen in Longmeadow? So in Longmeadow, we had a strong town manager. Um, so Stephen Crane was the town manager when I was there. Yeah. So he kind of dealt with most of the political side of it, whereas being a department head under the mayor, I see more of the political side of it. And then there are certain things where it's like, OK, I'm seeing this is happening. This could turn in, okay, let me call the mayor's office. Mm -hmm. Mayor, do you have a second? Five minutes, come up. Mayor, this just happened. I just want to make you aware of it because I have a feeling they're not going to like my answer. They're going to call you. Mm -hmm. And just as long as I had some sort of reasoning as to why I did it, the mayor would always make sure he would cover me or back me up. The Treasurer collector position. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a plus? Having a bind one? Yeah. In Springfield, maybe not, just because it's so big. Mm -hmm. In Agawam, mid sized town, population 30,000. Yes, I do think it is very nice to have that combined position. Um, it would depend upon each town. Um, I know yours is separate and both are elected separately here. So, and I know there's one community that has a treasure collector clerk as well. Mm. What's your background in planning and development? There's a lot of, uh, you know, concern, there's a talk about a master plan, doing a master plan here and uh, dealing, sort of preparing for the, uh, potentiality of uh, more growth or expansion, but the town is obviously very concerned about losing its community character. Mm -hmm. What's your uh, background with land use and development? So land use and development, um, not much, unfortunately. Um, when I was president of my neighborhood council way back um, in 0, 09 to 13, I was president. So Springfield's very unique in that each neighborhood has a neighborhood council. Um, whenever somebody wants a liquor license, a change of zone use, something like that, they come and present to the neighborhood council. Mm -hmm. This is what we're thinking of. And then as president, I had the pleasure of having 10 other people on the board with me and then just managing, okay, when are you guys available? We'll bring in the consultant, you know, this or the proposed, this is what we're looking at. I remember we had um, a liquor license coming in and we said to him, you know, we don't think two can fly for you right now for a closing. Can you do one with no treatments after midnight and then six months come back to us, we'll talk about two, stuff like that. Um, excuse me, their patio, they want for a patio. Okay, residential area, we want it to shut down at this time. Are you fine with that? Mm -hmm. By, for the most part, if you're working with them and they understand where you're coming from, they're more than willing to help you get there for what is best for them and for the area. What was the process for Long Metal preparing this budget as a town? So we would get the budget director from the finance director. Um, sometimes it was November, end of November, sometimes it was beginning of December. Um, here's the budget process. I would start preparing the salary portion of it, um, which was all in spreadsheets, um, clearing it out, um, move, um, making sure the formulas didn't break, um, any name updates that I knew of, I tried to get ahead of that, and then just emailing the departments, hey, this is what, this is your spreadsheet. 
please check this, this, and this within it. Make sure the steps are right, anniversary days are right, your employment rosters are right. Like our DPW department always had turnover. Um, lease, fire were a little more stable. And then you had the smaller departments, your treasure collector, your clerks, where it's been the same people for 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And they're all at their max step. Um, we would go through that. Um, the town manager, finance director would have the meetings with the department heads. This is what they would do. Okay. Um, Longmeadow has some financial policies. Um, one off the top of my head, I remember, is they wanted to do 1% of the whole of the whole tax levy to OPEB. And then select board could waive it. So there were times where it's, okay, well, we're at two and a half. You're, you're, we're going to need an override for your OPEB. Does the select board want to waive it? And every single time, select board's, yep, we'll waive it. We don't want to do an override for it. Or occasionally they'd say, okay, maybe we'll do less for make sure DPW gets their new dump truck this year. Or, um, and then as that would progress, we would get the numbers from the finance director. Okay, these are what's approved. We'd go in, we had this huge spreadsheet. We'd update all those numbers in there because that would feed into another spreadsheet, which was the booklet that residents got at town meeting for this is what it is. Um, Long Meadow appropriates at one of the highest levels I've ever seen, the function level, so all of public safety's one line item on at town meeting, all of general government's one line item, culture and recreation's one line item. Uh, discretion there. Yes, yeah. it, they'd have the backup with the departments, right. yeah. but the actual vote was at the function level. What are you guys doing? You mentioned the fact the max step things. What do you do for those employees that are at the max step on the scale? So in Long Meadow, um, there are fifteen steps before you hit your max. Um, you'd get longevity. You'd after so many years, you'd get longevity, and that would increase. So That's staggered also. Yes. Yeah, so if you were. If you started at step one, by the time you were at step 15, you were getting your third level of longevity, which depending upon bargaining unit, it was anywhere between 250 and $300 for every five years of service. What's been your role in collective bargaining? Um, for the most part, it was, we're thinking of this. Have you seen this before? What would this cost for us? What would this do for us? I've never been at the table okay. actually bargaining. It was always behind the scenes, either running numbers or occasionally they'd say to me, have you seen this elsewhere? Staying with personnel, um, what's been your, you know, we have your, uh, your resume, the number of people that you've supervised. Um, what's been your participation in hiring people? <gasps> I've hired several people um, in Westfield. My deputy left me within two months of starting, so I had to hire that position. In Springfield, I had 75% of the department age out in my two and a half years there, so I had to replace all of them. In some cases, I had to replace the replacement because the replacement was poached for a higher salary job elsewhere within the city. In Agawam, I've had um, for my people turnover since I've been there due to retirements and aging out. Okay. What would your employees, if we were to contact uh, some of the employees that work with you, what would they tell us? Depends upon which one you contact. Okay. What if we were to call uh, your supervisors? What would they tell us? Um, hopefully good things. Um, I know TJ appreciated me when we were looking at doing pension obligation bonds. Um, it's a very interesting time looking at it because it was right as the rates were starting to hike. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if this is going to work. Um, I know my first boss, Pat, I'm still in contact with him. He'd probably say great things for me. Probably Paul as well. Okay. Okay. The mayor. Dominic, yes. Okay. Part of the, um, the human resources project portion would be um, conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. um, in the event there was a HR issue or something where you had to mediate, how would you handle that? Depend upon the situation. Every situation is different. If it's a conflict between employees, you'd want to separate them, get each one of their stories separately, see if there's any potential witnesses, interview those witnesses, get statements from those witnesses. Um, then you would do research on the facts if they're, I don't, 
know if you guys have video cameras in certain offices. My guess is you don't. Um, if there were, uh, obviously review any video footage. And then based on everybody's statements, whether it's the two employees, hopefully there's witnesses because it's a, he said, she said, that could be very, very difficult to resolve. If there is a witness that can help, a third party is always great for that because hopefully they're not invested one way or the other between the two. And then just trying to figure out what the best course of action is. Is it, you know, maybe somebody gets suspended, maybe not, maybe it's a write-up, maybe it's um, an employee has to post for a transfer somewhere else. It's very difficult to say with a generic question, but there could be several options and ways forward depending upon what exactly happened. Just to follow up, and not in so extreme circumstances, but sometimes conflict can mean just disagreements in the way some things are being done or procedures that aren't being done properly between, mm -hmm. say, an elected board and an appointed board. Like with your cemetery commission recently? Well, one example. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's different things that would happen where, you know, you, if you're in the position as town administrator, would have to make sure that said board or said committee would have to follow properly. <laughs> yes. Not necessarily conflict, but more of like play by the rules. So sometimes it's just ignorance. Could be somebody, sometimes elected people aren't fully aware of the full responsibility of their duties. So maybe it's just something where it's, hey, do you have a minute? Can I come talk to you? This is, you know, you're now elected, these procedures, you know, government's far different than the private sector. We have several policies, procedures, you have union um, issues that for the most part don't exist in the private sector outside of building trades and a few other here's and there's. Um, you know, you probably have a salary scale to place people on, you know, you want to make sure that's followed because that if somebody's placed on the wrong portion of a salary scale and it's higher than it potentially should be, that can create issues within other departments. Um, most of most 90 to 99 percent of the time with the elected board it's just ignorance of we they weren't aware that one to ten percent you know if it's something i can't resolve personally i would probably bring it to the attention of the select board because the select board is still the ultimate authority within the town even with some of the other elected boards you know you kind of have to potentially half help me rein in somebody that kind of dovetails into my next question, similar to what Craig was going. When you come into a town like this, we have, I don't want to say institutional knowledge, mm -hmm. policies, procedure, and people. A new person coming in. What's your style for that? Do you try, would you say, well, I need to get these people on a new path? Or do you sit down, like you say, you sit down, you examine where they're coming from, how they're managing, and say, here's a way we could do it better. Can we get there together? That type of thing. Like you talked about, mm -hmm. sometimes it might just be, almost maybe the, not the word ignorance is proper, but not having the knowledge of mm -hmm. something that you've done a certain way. Is, would you say your manager's style would be, this is the way it's going to be, or can we walk that road together? So I would try to walk that road together, mm -hmm. um, depending upon what it is, um, there are certain state statutes that are very very strict if those weren't being followed i'd try okay here's the statute this is how it's supposed to be we need to do this and then if i was still getting pushback um depending upon who it was how it was potentially informing the select board you know this is this is what i did this is how i tried to fix it it's not working i would like to do this next encourage more participation in organizations, if you will. Mm -hmm. I know, for instance, MMA offers various subgroups mm -hmm. for personnel, planning, conservation. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great tool for different municipalities to, you know, because, hey, other people might know the answer. Yes. Throw it out there. Yep. It's easier to steal from somebody than to try to figure it out on your own. Oh, we don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> what, Chris, what's your experience with IT and facilities management? <laughs> Um, so I know enough about IT to be a little dangerous, but don't ask me to run, don't ask me to rebuild your computer or run wire or anything like that. Facilities management, um, I have a decent working knowledge of, I know roofs, useful life of roofs. Um, I know certain things you're starting to 
depending upon what you're doing on a building, if it reaches a certain threshold with the, um, with the I believe it's called the commercial code, you have to bring the whole building up to ADA compliance. I know I've talked with our facilities director with some of our buildings in town and there are things where, okay, we want to do windows and doors. Well, guess what? If we do the windows and doors, we now have to do the whole building over. Okay, so that means we're doing the windows this year, the doors next year, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Three year look back. Yeah. No. Well, if the boiler stops, can you start it? Depends on what kind of boiler. <laughs> Is it code compliant or not? <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah, the full start look. Any, the <laughs> Any other questions? Great. Um, in general or in relation to that? In general. In general. Um, if you were offered the position, mm -hmm. being a new town administrator, how would you build the relationships with the community and um, look for public outreach? I mean, sometimes it's just being seen at events. I mean, there's community events all the time. I know you guys had um, one recently with the Boston Tea Party member in town, obviously show up to that. Um, there's a community-wide event showing up there. Um, I know Mountain View now has car shows, maybe showing up to that, even though I'm not really that big of a car person. Um, just being visible within the community. Guess we have to get them a classic car as part of the contract, huh? Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. <laughs> I like cars. Yeah. I borrow yours. <laughs> Anything else? Oh. Questions for us? Um, the only question I would ask is, you guys are elected, so you guys choose to run for this. What made you guys decide to run for select board, and what do you like about being a select board member? Right. We'll, go um, by, we'll go by age. My, go my kids maybe just gave me the option to run. Um, I wanted to, my kids to see me be a leader mm -hmm. and wanted to lead by example, and I wanted to help form the community that they were going to grow up in. Okay. By age, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. I grew, up, I grew up in a family that believed in community service and giving back. Okay. It's just in my DNA. I'm a uh, government junkie. Uh, I was an aide to Senator John Glenn. I was chief of staff of the Middlesex County District Attorney. I was chief of staff at two attorney generals from Massachusetts. I was on the school committee here, the Zoning Board of Appeals. And then I was sitting home retired and my wife said, this isn't like a real retirement, is it? So <laughs> I ran for selectmen. So you have to push out the house. <laughs> at least one night, at least I'm gone one night or two days a week. <laughs> so I, I believe in government service and, and, and uh, you know, you can make a difference and, and everyone should get involved in some way in their town, whether it's town meeting or Boy Scouts or whatever. I really, I just believe that, so. Okay. Why did you get involved in government? Um, kind of similar to Mr. Flynn's, you know, my grandfather grew up giving back, my, both grandfathers, um, it's just kind of one of those things and, you know, I started as a temp and it just took off from there. Okay. Okay. Well, Flynn, Great. thank you, Chris. Thank, thank you, you very much for coming. And like I say, uh, we're going to make our decision hopefully January 29th, that's our plan. Okay. Thank you. Joe,
You didn't go out and get the munchkins, huh? I did not. I got water. <laughs> Sarah, so was last night the planning board hearing in East Long Meadow? Yes. How was it? It well was, attended. Are we on record? <laughs> are we being it's recorded? Well, it is recording. I mean, was it well attended? Um, about thirty people, I would say, came. Yeah. But it was. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, that was my count. But it was far less well attended than uh, previous meetings on the same subject. Mm -hmm. Um. The snow was a large part of it. They continued it to another date so more people could come out because they figured the snow was keeping people away. I would think so. I would have thought it would have been, I mean, go back to different plants, mixed use, all the different things. Oh, yeah. Where you saw a lot more community involvement, if you will. Yeah. Yep. So, hmm. So. I think it'll be another Carvana, another Carvana type thing. Yeah. Southwick. Yeah, that's Southwick one. That was a, a heck of a time they had in doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I thought they were. I thought they'd be well attended. I mm -hmm. don't bring this guy up. Yeah. <laughs> Doing these type of things, it's hard to remember you know, the same questions to ask all the time. You know? I know I got them, but it, it's, yeah. The, the follow-ups are always going to be different no matter what. Exactly. So. How are you liking the Zoom job? Well, it's pretty hard. <laughs> so you went last night though, right? I did. Was it, yeah. yeah. Or for, was it for ConCom you did? Yeah. 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 Good. yeah. Big attendance or? No. How many people online? Um, one came on and then went off. Yeah. Probably when they saw Glendale wasn't going to be discussed. That Probably. Was, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you get your own key to the town hall and everything? Not. Wow. <laughs> Remember how Lauren's face lit up when she got her key? Oh, yeah. yeah. Big moment in her life. <laughs> No stay ever. <laughs> Who's next on the agenda? Mr. Domina. Brian Domina. Should have stopped to grab a box of Joe. Brought pods. Pods? No Starbucks? No, peas. <laughs> yeah. You're fourth on the list, and we're bringing you in next. <laughs> Mr. 
So how was the uh, country club? Nice. Yeah. Look different. I mean, it looks like it's been rehabbed. Or... So he. I don't know what it was like before. Yeah. Uh, Never been there. Mr. Lynch said he told him to be here at four fifteen. So. Okay. okay. If you want to? Uh, let's go talk about the cable guy. Is Bob there? Can you get? Is he? Is he unmuted? He can unmute himself. I think. Yeah. I'm. I'm unmuted now. Okay, Bob, you want to talk about the cable contract? Because we had asked about how many hours it would be. I did uh, ask uh, Attorney Solomon, who wanted uh, $200 an hour, as you recall, how long he expected it would take. He said up to 25 hours. Uh, to since one of the areas where there's usually a lot of contention is uh, local access, since the town doesn't have a local access channel, and doesn't want one or more. Usually it's the case that the town has one or two and they want a third, or they have one and they want a second. And that's a lot of contention, but it's kind of going away. Uh, you know, the cable companies are doing their best uh, to get out of that business of funding local access channels. And uh, since that's not going to be a major area of contention, he said to me that uh, he would want to check uh, around the region to see what rates are being charged uh, by the company um, and to see if there is a difference between the rates uh, that Spectrum charges to those communities that have local access and where there's a surcharge or not. And if it's the case that we have roughly equal rates and <clears throat> including those communities that, that have a surcharge, then he thinks that's an issue that has to be pursued. Hmm. Other than that, I mean, I, uh, concluding an agreement uh, shouldn't take a lot of, a lot of time. Um, those, are, those are his thoughts, so. So, so would we take that cost that illegal or I suggested legal because yeah we're well, pretty uh like pretty 5, good shape. Five, yeah. Yeah. yeah it'd come out illegal all right and if we uh well we'd have to cover you have to cover in may if there's any additional expenses there although given the last few years of experience i think we are using town council a little bit less this fiscal year than prior years well, I think I saw the last recap of uh, the six month projection from Cliff. We were at 30% yeah. expenditure in that, that right. account. So we yeah. had right. quite a bit left. So. Right. And with contract renewal, it seems appropriate for law and legal claims. No. So we want to authorize the town administrator to work with the lawyer. What was his name, Bob? Harold Solomon, is it? William Solomon. Solomon. I would move to. Uh, designate the town administrator to work with, what was it, William Solomon? <laughs> Sorry, yes. you just said it. <laughs> oh, I'll <absolutely> forget. <laughs> I would you know, it in my head at the time. Have uh, you tried pri Privagen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, I would have moved to authorize the town administrator to work with legal counsel for the renewal contract of Spectrum. <laughs> Any further okay. discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so you can yeah. sign that, all right. So yeah, we have that's a done. document for us to sign next yeah. week, or? Okay. Will you have a thing, formal thing for us to sign Monday? I uh, I just saw saw some people coming in, so. Uh, what was your question? Do we, will we be able to sign that on Monday? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, well, yeah we'll get the contract on Monday, okay. Yeah, we'll do it. All right. You think that's them? That uh, brings up kind of a question, Don. So typically the town minister has been the procurement officer. However, with Bob's abbreviated schedule, I think we should probably try and formalize a little, maybe a different path, you know, for things that need to be done, you know. 
try and get these either authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the board. If something's going to be signed on Thursday, we can't wait till Monday. Right. And it falls under the limit. I mean, it's less than ten thousand. Yeah, yeah. Or something. Okay. I would say that we would consider the chair of the board to be also the <laughs> until such time we get a new TA. All right. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to buy that car now. That makes sense, Bob. Are you going to pay me? You want to go into the, the, I, the other item I, I put on was the discussion of the definition of the role and responsibility of the town administrator. I, I sent a couple of documents and I thought perhaps we really should, in fairness to the applicants and to what we, and when we do go to the negotiations with them, I think we have to really spell out what we're willing to have them mm -hmm. take responsibility for and how we're going to. I, I like what you sent. Um, everything looked really good. I, I agree with everything in there. Mm -hmm. um, I think I just saw like a typo of some sort. What? Oh, well, 2 30 <laughs> in the morning, Doc. <laughs> you can't turn all the lights on, right? <laughs> no, no, she frowns on that. <laughs> she frowns on that. Uh, wait, wait, what is it under? And I do a quick thing for the Board of Health also, something we can touch on. Oh, okay. You quick for the Board of Health? Yeah, it's just uh, basically set, they're putting a, uh, a garage up and it typically just goes through. Oh, okay. The plan. So on, we'll, on Monday, we'll discuss that further and formalize that? Or? Yeah, I, I, I think what you have here is great. Mm -hmm. you know? No, it's formalized on Monday. Yeah, okay. Right. All right. What do you have? Uh, basically, the, there's a application to the planning board that uh, this couple on potash is going to put up a garage which exceeds the half of its footprint thing so they have to get a special permit and it's going through the different departments and so the board health has there's no health concerns at all because they're not putting a, a toilet in there. just an fyi is he here yeah You're new guy yeah. another another quick update the okay. the school committee person? planning committee <laughs> is meeting tomorrow like we've heard that before. before. <laughs> yeah. 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 Some scheduling conflicts. Like quorum issues? Yeah. Quorum, quorum yeah. issues. Quorum issues. Sure they are done. Now is, is school committee tonight? School committee is tonight, 6.30, Thornton Burgess Library. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Didn't realize that. Part of the roadshow. Part of the roadshow. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. I booked these an hour apart, and you're very efficient interviewers. So That's how we roll. Let me introduce Brian Domino. Hello. John Flynn. John Brian Domino. And uh, we're Brian Domino. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you. Hey. How was your trip down from the hinterlands? It was better than I thought it would be. <laughs> I thought I was going to get backed up off exit one, but. A little early for the backup, I think. Yeah. Used to drive my son to what was used to be the Arbors, which is yeah. like Roots, I think. For soccer practice, practice, and we always used to get stuck on off exit one there. So that was 5.30. Well, first of all, thank you for coming in, and thank you for your interest in the town of Hamden. Uh, you're on Zoom, you're being recorded, so you know what that, that means. I do, yeah. And uh, I, we have some people from, have some uh, uh, department heads from the town here. So. Uh, Jane Padinkwitz, Board of Health. Scott Trondor, Police Chief. Hi, President, Chair, Government Study, and Analyst. Hello. Ted Brown, Mr. President. <laughs> <Those> people. <laughs> and on, on the uh, on Zoom, I think we have Michelle Boudreaux as the chairwoman of the, of the chairperson of the school committee and also assistant treasurer. Uh, Joanne Fiore is our, in our planning department. And John Plaster is the chairman of the water commission. And I believe Wendell Hulbert, our building inspector, is also still on there someplace. Yes. Okay. Hello. Okay. And uh, so, once again, thank you and, and uh, appreciate you coming in. Uh, give us a short description of your professional experience and, and take a couple of minutes to tell us what makes the town of Hamden and this opportunity for us to be the next town administrator good for you. Sure. 
Um, so since 2016, I've been the town administrator for the town of Waitley in southern Franklin County. Uh, I do uh, much of this, I think much of the similar things that you have your town administrator do here. Um, we run the day-to-day -day operations of the town on behalf of and with the spec board. I work with the finance committee for municipal planning budgeting. Uh, I'm the chief procurement officer there. Uh, I wear a lot of hats actually because uh, it's a smaller town. Uh, prior to uh, making the shift over to Waitley, I was with the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission in Pittsfield. And I did mostly, so that's a, the regional planning agency, that's the, the equivalent down here is Pinder Valley Planning Commission. So I did a lot of uh, work with uh, planning boards, zoning boards, to work on zoning bylaws, economic development, those types of things. And prior to um, starting at the Planning Commission, I was actually in law school. I graduated law school and I passed the bar in 2008. And that was right at the start of the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. so the job uh, market was not great then. I actually started with the Brooks Regional Planning Commission as an unpaid intern because it just couldn't really find, uh, you know, work out here. I wanted to come back to Western Mass. It's where I grew up. Uh, it's where I'm embracing my family now. So that was, you know, that was just something we had, to, something I had to do. I needed to get experience somehow and, and get my foot in the door. So um, that's really how I ended up in Waitley. Um, so Waitley's, Waitley's a small town. It's 1,600 people. Hamden's probably three times the size, approximately three times the size. So for me, it's I'm looking for the next career move. Um, I really didn't think I would be there that long, but... COVID pandemic happened and I was it just, just hunkered down and, you know, we just got through it like everybody did. Um, so um, for, for my next career move, I'd, I'd like to go to a, a, a um, bigger, smaller town mm -hmm. that I'm more comfortable in, in smaller towns. Um, that's just what I gravitate towards. That's what I'm used to. I've been watching your meetings on, you know, on the YouTube. Yeah. You seem to be dealing with a lot of similar problems that we're experiencing here, you know, so it's interesting. I mean, the only thing I think you have uh, cannabis, which we don't, yep. but uh, the other things you're dealing with, very similar to what the town of Hamden is. Yeah. So. How many people are in the town of Wheatley? 1,600 plus. Well, the smaller towns have a town administrator, I would think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a busy small town, but it's small nonetheless. There's a lot of tourism, right? Yeah, Yankee Candle is actually right over the, the Yankee Candle retail shop is right over the border mm -hmm. um, from Waitley. So there's a lot of people that come through. Um, and there's some bigger, there's still a lot, uh, some bigger agricultural operations mm -hmm. that are, that are, uh, they're bordering on like industrial ag, but um, there's a lot of smaller farms too, but. A couple state roads. Is it 116? Um, 116 goes through a tiny piece of the town and then state, uh, state Road 5 and 10, and then 91 bisects the town. So there's a lot of people that pass pass through town. Do you have any street lights? <laughs> um, <laughs> interesting that you should ask. No, they, the town voted prior to when I arrived there to, to shut them off. And well, it, no traffic, traffic, traffic lights. lights. Traffic, traffic, traffic lights. lights. <laughs> we shut the street lights off before. Cool. Okay, good. As I say, like, them back on. there's like two street lights that are that are still uh, still. But those traffic lights. I would pay for uh, two, three. Really? Oh. So you're that big? It's at it's at <laughs> it's at the interchange with uh, 91. So. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Uh, Do you maintain them, or it's the state? Uh, the state does. <laughs> that doesn't count them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is one flashing yellow light. If it wasn't for 91, there would be one flashing yellow light. Okay. Yeah, one guy operating a turret. <laughs> um, you, what's the government like there? You know, the form, elected officials? Yeah, it's actually very similar. It's three members select board, yeah. open town meeting, town administrator. Finance board or advisory board? Uh, finance committee. Okay. Uh, appointed by the moderator. Many of the appointments are by the moderator in Waitley, um, a handful by the select board. Are your uh, clerk and treasurer elected or? Uh, the town clerk is elected. 
and our treasure collectors appointed. And treasure collector is a combined position. Mm -hmm. well, is it a three member or five member select? It is a three member select board. 1,600 people, you don't need three. Yeah. One question that came up, and I think it's something you've been discussing, is a shared service, which we've been mm -hmm. you know, dealing a lot with here, both uh, health, dispatch, but account. You know, and we're we talk about planning, job planning, you know, position planning, uh, looking ahead to possible retirements. You guys were looking, I think, at a shared account. We right? yes, yeah. What are your um, thoughts on that? Was it John? What did you say? Shared what? Shared account. Account. Shared account. Shared account. So the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, which is the equivalent of PVP essentially the equivalent of Pine Valley Planning Commission. It's a little bit different because it's a council of governments, but they operated a regional accounting program for a long time. Mm -hmm. So we use a read, so they have a regional accounting program. So we, right now we share an account through their program. Mm -hmm. And the biggest benefit to us was the vendor allowed us one license to share amongst it was like eight or nine towns. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really the benefit to the town was there was cost savings with the license, not to mention it's very difficult to find qualified municipal employees these days. The, the vendor decided to pull the plug on the shared license um, for this upcoming fiscal year. So really the financial benefit to the town of being with that program it, at the COG is, doesn't really exist anymore. So now we're, we're looking at keeping our account but sharing it with, uh, it's the town of Shelburne. Mm. Um, and it's, it allows us, so it, it, it's a, a particular situation where the accountant just wants to stay part-time. Mm -hmm. Um, so. Um, What's your budget? It is just over, it's between six and seven million. Hmm. With of course half of it going to education. Just half? Half plus. Just half? Yeah, I think it's like 55%. 70%, 60%, 70%? Uh, our share for the, uh, our budget is towards education of like 66, yeah, 67. 66, yeah. yeah. You, and you've got a regional school district. We are a regional school district from seven to 12 in a superintendency union for elementary. I don't know that. What was the superintendency union? So we essentially share a super, in, so we have the regional school district towns, yep. and then each town has their separate school district, which is managed by a, the same superintendent in central office but the oh. town still has uh so you have one superintendent for how many towns um four and you sh you just divide it up by waters or uh, um it's by population okay. so what do you feel that different most. actually so you have local schools up until grade six yep but the administration for the local schools is still the regional right Sounds similar. I'm not sure why it's called. Yeah. Different. Well, is there a superintendent for the region, for the high school? There's one superintendent for the high school and the, it's the same and the elementary schools. Same. It's the same, same person. person. You, you must have a school committee for one. Uh, one local school. One local school committee, and then the regional school committee. School committee. Yeah. The only way it's different. Right? It's interesting. But they're still managed, so to speak, by the region, in yeah. terms of like administration they're just centralized up until sorry yeah they're regionalized if you will Let's yeah each town has a, oh, a <laughs> they're local up until grade six yeah. including grade six it's a hiring is made by the school committee for the town no difference except for the local school right. yeah right yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a local school committee yeah for the up the grade six part yeah mm. Mm. Oh, four towns yep mm. So what percentage are you in the, uh, what'd you say? Um, we're in the teens, I want to say maybe around 16. Mm -hmm. Percent Deerfield's the largest town. Deerfield? Yeah, it's Deerfield, Sunderland, Whitley and Conway are similar. Conway might be a little bit larger. Mm -hmm. So John had mentioned there's a lot of similarities between Whitley and, and what Hamden's going through right now. Um, I'm sure you did a little bit of research about Hamden and, and how we've got some similar projects. How do you feel that what you're going through with currently, you can adapt with and excel with here based on your knowledge on our projects going forward? Yeah. Um, 
I feel like it, I feel like most towns are dealing with uh, building and facilities issues. Um, yeah, so much that I know that there's been legislation introduced for, to create, uh, so that you have the Mass School Building Authority. Um, there's a, a legislation introduced to create like a public building authority, similar to the Mass School Building Authority, because there's the, the representatives and centers are getting so many requests from municipalities that it's just, it's just a, a, a big issue. Um, our town offices are, are, are newer, um, but you know, I, I, I did manage a, a historic rehab project for uh, the historic town hall in Waitley, which was about, ended up being about $1.8 million. Mm -hmm. That was through a series of grants. We tried to, we cobbled together the funding to do that through grants um, and other, other sources of town funds. We used some CPA funds for some of the historic aspects of it. Um, so just trying to put together that financing package to be able to pay for the whole project. Um, it, it, I think it's, it, it's good for the town. It saves the town money in the end because we're able to leverage state funding. One of the strengths we have in our current town administrator is the way he gets grants. He is the grant meister. Yeah. How was your experience? Um, it's been pretty good. Have you beat out Hamden for any? <laughs> I don't know. I, they don't tell us. Um, we can compare notes after, though. Um, I, going back to the Planning Commission, I, I've applied for and received uh, EPA Brownfields grants. Mm. That was for the town of Dalton. Um, multiple Green Communities grants, MVP grants, and this is in Waitley, um, Green Communities grants for energy efficiency projects. What's your position on green communities? That's a good uh, second. I noticed Hamden was not a green community, so I don't want to I don't want to step on any uh, live wires. OK, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> one of the few in the in the in the Commonwealth, right? We're unique. Yes. Yeah. No, no traffic lights, no green. Community. I mean, I know the I've, I've heard arguments against it yeah. and for it, so. Um, what is your success rate? Oh, Johnson, you mentioned you asked that about your success rate, but you're, you're knowledgeable on writing grants and you're comfortable with doing that process. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And you had mentioned here the grants that you had worked on bridge replacement and sidewalk and stuff. Is those are grants you were looking for or grants you were able to secure? Um, we were able to get, uh, it's called a, a grant through the small bridge program. Yeah. The town had a, uh, well, two, there was one bridge that was closed on with a town a road called Williamsburg Road that went to Williamsburg, obviously. Um, so we applied to the small bridge program um, when it first came out to replace that bridge. Mm -hmm. And we we're actually able to replace that bridge and um, a bridge further up the further up the road to, to do that as well. That was it was originally about six hundred thousand, I think, for the one bridge and then Matt Stott was able to find additional funds. Um, to, to do the second one because it, it in the end it didn't make a lot of sense because the the weight restriction on the, the bridge further up even though it wasn't closed was it needed to be done it didn't balance out right yeah um and then the complete streets program we've gotten two grants through the complete streets program the town had his um the historic district the central historic district had sidewalks that went through it was probably about two miles of sidewalks that went through um the center historic district and they were installed once and never maintained probably in the 1970s so there was it, it, they were just hazardous essentially at that point there were tree roots and yeah um, we were able to get um, a complete streets grant hmm. how, how much to, do you remember uh the first one i think the first one was around 180 and the second one was a little bit smaller we had to do it in two phases because hmm. the i think the grant cap was around 200,000. dollars you were able to cover it all with the grant funding so, yeah and those two those two phases the one the one catch we did have was engineering for the sidewalks. The, the grant wouldn't cover that. Mm. And there was some, I don't, like they don't recall what it was, but yeah, we, we essentially, we couldn't use the grant funds for, for engineering. I don't know why, but it was just a part who of does, it. Um, who does Waitley use for engineering? Um, we've used uh, several different firms, depending on what the projects are. We've used Berkshire Design Group out of Northampton. We've used Tyne Bond. Tyne Bond said most of our bridge work. Um, we're using Weston and Samson now for a, we're doing a feasibility study for a, a new highway garage. 
that's about to kick off. What's your experience in, uh, or how's, what's your style basically with the townhouse crew, if you will? Are you a fan of monthly meetings, bi-weekly meetings? Are you, are you a fan of that at all? Do you get together with them on a somewhat regular basis to discuss uh, how things are going? Yeah. Um, a lot of it's a lot of it's just day to day check ins mm -hmm. that that we do. Um, I like to I, I don't I don't want to micromanage people, but I like to know what's what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and if if um, we're having issues, I would I would like to know about them. I have an open door policy because um, it's a it's a collaborative work environment. Mm -hmm. We work with a, a lot of different people that are not directly under the control of the town administrator. Um, so it's in my view it's a collaborative work environment and everybody needs to work together to get you know whatever the common goal is we need to work together to do that so uh. I, I, this is kind of a follow-up uh, let's say that the, the selectmen say we want to uh i don't know everyone's going to go onto the cloud and some of the departments say we don't want to go onto the cloud but just the policy, the selectmen that we're going to do this. How do you manage that? Yeah. Um, the conversations, communication with the with the department heads. Um, talk about uh, have conversations about what the what the what the pros and cons are of it, and why the select board chose what it did. Um, but at the end of the day, there's certain authorities vested with certain boards, and that's the way it is. Um, so. How was your IT experience? Um, good. I do a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Only the really challenge. I do a lot of the computer replacements mm -hmm. um, and any of the, the software licenses or Rose. or those types of things. Um, installing the new equipment that comes in. You too. Hi, Rose. Rose. Mm -hmm. Bye, Matt. Well, uh, I wanted to talk to you about two things. One of them is, hold on, Bob. Hold on, Bob. Bob. What? You're not muted. You're not muted, Bob. There he goes. All right. Making dinner plans tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. Go ahead. I, I think Bob was talking, talking to sure town council. I, 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 yeah. Talking to town council. Okay. <laughs> Um, you, you, he's muted. Mute that one. He's muted. Um, I do a lot of any of the replacement stuff that's that that's required for computers, printers, those types of things. Um, I'm the administrator of the. So we use Microsoft 365 for the email. Mm -hmm. I'm the administrator for that. Um, the YouTube account, things website. like that. The YouTube account and posting. I mean, you guys do a lot of online meetings. Who's in charge of putting all those up? And, um. <clears throat> So yeah, we, do you have an admin assistant? I do. You do? Yeah, a part-time admin assistant. Part-time. Yeah. Um, so what's the, uh, I think, Don, you asked this question last time, the the model for the TA in Wayland, is it the strong TA? Is it the TA that works with the board, under the board? Yeah, it, I, I work at the direction of the select board. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I like to think over the the, Seven plus years I've been there that they they've come to trust and um, you know they they allow me to do things. Uh, I think our understanding is that if it's in the if it's in the general direction of, of the way that the board wants to go, then I have latitude to do that. Is there weekly meetings up there? Um, I know the holidays are odd, well, odd, but you know we meet twice a month, or as if something were to come up. Uh, budget. How do you, how's the budget prepared there? What, and what's your role in it? So I compile the budget. So I, I put out a budget request to the department heads and I collect them and I assemble it and put it together. And we have conversations with, um, with the different department heads about what they, what they're seeing in terms of costs and expenses and what they think the appetite of the finance committee and the select board are for Sort of now, by, now, by department heads, do you mean what about the independent elected boards like Parks and Rec? I don't know if you have that or not, but Parks and Rec and in, in uh, 
planning. Planning, you know. Yep, everybody said, yep, so the, the board chairs submit budgets. To you? Yep. Right, and then you compile it, and then you go, you have a finance committee and an advisory committee? Yep, and then I then I meet with the finance committee. Well, we have anywhere between six to eight meetings, I think, mm -hmm. um, a budget season. And then we, we talk about it and we look at, you know, we look at, and that's in, in collab, you know, we look at the capital budget as well. So mm -hmm. we look at the operating budget and the capital budget. And I work with the capital improvement planning committee. When do you start that process? I mean, is it? So the, it's mostly in, so the capital improvement is soon. We usually start that first thing in January. Mm -hmm. And the budget planning, used to start at the end of January, but since the pandemic, the, the town, annual town meeting has been moved back to June. Mm -hmm. So we shift the process sure. a little bit later. And your elections too, or? The elections are the, the second Tuesday in June. In, June. Yeah. in terms of the budget, how much do you, does anyone do uh, financial planning for the for the for the town in terms of fiscal forecasts and sort of uh, trend monitoring, uh, are you involved with that type of work, or uh, do you coordinate that with somebody? Yeah. That... Um, I'll do I'll do a presentation at the beginning of the budget seasons on, on financial trends in the town. Okay. Um, but there's not really a forecast that's a forecast per se that's put together. Okay. So how do you determine how much you're going to put into capital? Uh, just in terms of the cap, is it a capital budget or is there a five-year capital plan? Um, so we have, so we have a 10-year capital plan. Well, okay. So we have a 10-year capital plan. The plan is only as good as what people put on it, of course, right? Um, but it catches a lot of the larger items. And then um, a, a lot of times it's, it's the, the finance committee and select board discussing how much is available in terms of free cash and other sources of funding stabilization. You said you have a project for the highway garage at this point. Yeah. yeah. Is that a complete build or an expansion? It will be a, it will be a complete, it will be a complete knockdown and rebuild. Yeah. Oh. It, it's in very poor, it, it was built very cheaply in the 1960s, 1970s. It was mm -hmm. a center block building, uh, then on the proper footings and it was, uh, it's just corroded from the, from the road south, so the building is just sort of, it's eventually just going to crumble. It's just eventually just going to crumble if it doesn't get addressed. So it's problem center, right? Um, yeah. it, is the state participating in that or is it funded solely on your shoulders? Um, so currently we're in the, we're in the programming. So we're doing a programming study to figure out our space needs mm -hmm. for the new building. And that's funded with uh, town, town funds currently. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're looking at multi-million, are you hoping for a grant or are you looking at it's just going to be a bond? Um, so we did talk with, uh, well, we have reached out to the, um, so USDA has a rural development program. Um, we did reach out to the rural development program and uh, we'll, we'll continue discussions with them. Mm -hmm. I don't, there wasn't much. So I think that can be sort, sort of like a hybrid loan grant, but wait, we didn't qualify for much of a, much of the grant portion of that. So if there's if there's funds to be you know gotten, we'll try to find them. Mm -hmm. But that there's not a lot out there currently that I know of. Um, like small other person. than nothing for public buildings per se. Public buildings per bridge, se. Bridge money, tip, whatever. There's something there. Right. Uh, there's a lot of there seems to be a lot of money now for well through the MVP program, you know. It, Projects that will address climate change. Right. Climate change. We've got one yeah. so. Can you give us some example of conflict management that you had within town hall or? Um, yeah, I know. I, I guess I got to be careful about uh, giving names, but. <laughs> he is a lawyer. No. Um, so. <laughs> I'll just that, say we had a, a, um, a department head who. Um, was going to be retiring, well, aging out essentially, um, who didn't, who, who was not happy about aging out, but um, it was not much we could do. Mm -hmm. 
and the 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 incoming replacement um the finance committee and select board agreed to a significant pay increase um so that person felt very slighted by that um and in that case it was just it, it, i did a lot of listening um in that case there wasn't a lot to do about it but i i think sometimes just listening sort of mm -hmm. lets the person get what they need to say out um and then we can move forward so do you have a salary scale there is the salary schedule um they do not they mm -hmm. did at one point uh prior to me um arriving in 2016 i'm told that it it went by the wayside because there wasn't they didn't keep adjusting it for inflation from year to year to year so a lot of i was told a lot of the department heads maxed out and then it was sort of like what do we do now uh, yeah, what do you do yeah <laughs> um it is on our it is on the town's agenda to um and i've gotten estimates from uh uh umass boston's collins center right that's what we use to 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 do one of those uh to do a, a compensation and classification plan because there was a lot of there was a lot of angst and disagreement in this past budget season about pay rates and um in, in cola was another big thing that it caused a lot of friction um between the finance committee and the select board and the employees so um it would be nice if we could sort of all agree on the schedule get it all out at once and then that's what we have for the next whatever it is five years oh, we like competitive with other towns etc oh my gosh the clerk over in yeah Deerfield is making three times what i do at the same time yeah so in the absence of that what we've been doing is we have a we've identified what we consider 10 comparable towns mm -hmm. based on population total budget there was, I think there was about um, 10 factors that we considered. Road mileage, I think, was one of them. And we did a, a, an annual survey mm -hmm. of those 10 towns, and then we would compare the town's pay rates with those. But it, it's, a, it's an arduous process, and a lot of, and I'll admit to it, when I get those requests, that's, they're not at the top of my inbox of, you know, providing some other town that, <laughs> You know with with the town salary information because i'm busy and so a lot of times the information we got was incomplete or sometimes we couldn't even get it right that's why it's so. easier to use a place like collins that yeah honestly you're paying for their service and their expertise yeah just like Tabor used to do back when we started yeah. Yeah. and if I, in my opinion if you can do it once and then get it set for the next five or ten years, it's right. going to reduce that conflict so during that time steps, period. At least you've got a plan going forward. Right? Yeah. Do you, uh, how do you get people involved in town government? I mean, I'm sure you've that's got, the million dollar. I'm sure, question. you got some vacancies, lots of boards. Yeah, that's the million dollar question for sure. What I've what, what I've experienced is that. It's been easier to get folks to participate when there's a discrete task and there's a there's a then there's a certain start date and end date. Um, we tend to have more difficulty with these open and a lot of the, our, our positions are open ended, but <clears throat> for specific committees that have a certain task, um, it's easier to get people to volunteer because they know what they're getting into. Um, so, for instance, we have a we're trying to sell. Um, uh, the center school. There's a Waitley, Waitley Center School. We have an R, we put out, I put out an RFP and we received proposals back. And it was easy to get folks to sit on that review committee. Um, but, you know, we, I mean, we can't find anybody for you know, these other positions that are sort of don't, their mission's a little bit foggy and it's sort of an indefinite duration. It's hard. Hard to get people like that. Say the one we've had good luck with is the long term thing, CPA, just because people typically understand you meet twice a year. Yeah. And even though it's a long commitment, it's not four times a month. So yeah. that's one. But you're right. You know, we have Don put an ad in the local paper, and I think we had eight committees and boards looking for members at this point. Yeah. So. I'm sure in your time as town administrator in Waitley, you've, you've 
been part of collective bargaining? We have not. Actually, you're not. You, you're not. You're completely. No, we have. We have no unions there. Oh, that's interesting. That's my. That's my one area that I don't have experience in. Okay. Police don't have a union. You're not. Wow, how lucky Hello. you are. Wow. I, know, I see the shock on his face over there. Look at that. And, and we don't want, no, just <laughs> Well, You're hired. You're hired. <laughs> we actually only had a, a police chief and one full time officer. So, oh. really? Yeah. Oh, All right, well, I'm going to throw a curveball at you then. Sure. Um, we have contract negotiations coming up with a, a couple of unions. Um, how would you? see your role in that process so for me I, I think my role would be to put together a, a good team um and to make sure that i would assume town council is involved and um whoever else from the town needs to be involved um, i don't know if it's a, whatever board members need to be involved um and i would educate myself about about uh, the process and about what um what more recent collective bargaining what what have, what have been the results of recent collective bargaining you know from nearby towns or in western mass or wherever because um I, i'm coming at this my wife's a teacher she's part of the teachers she's part of the teachers union um so everybody knows what everybody else has just received mm -hmm. um it's it's no secret um so it, i think it gives you a little preview of what of what might be asked um, but it's about putting together a good team and, and educating yourself about how many employees in the town hall are you supposed to take over um and maybe including dpw or whatever i mean how many employees does the separate from the school so so we have a so we have a lot of so i would guess between 40 and 50 but that's counting people who might work five hours or, mm -hmm. sure. you know. A lot of part-time help. Yeah, transfer station attendants, you know, so library assistants. Are you the HR things. person basically for everybody? Yeah, yeah, it's it's split a little bit. The treasurer collector does the, the benefit side of it, mm -hmm. but any of the, the other personnel issues would, would come sure. to me and to the personnel committee. They come through me to the personnel committee or the How selection. School? People, are they administered by the district, so to speak? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. You got shared services on ambulance? Yep. How's that doing? Um, that's been uh, that's been great. Okay. Yep. And volunteer fire department? Yep, or a paid on call fire department, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. How many say one station? Yeah. One small station, probably on the capital list soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, senior center? Uh, regional senior center. Located where? <laughs> Good question. Uh, it, it, it was located in Deerfield. Mm -hmm. uh, right now they are leasing space um, in Sunderland and Deerfield because the building was, it, it wasn't appropriate. The conditions of the building weren't appropriate. How about that school you're getting rid of? So that's kind of small. <laughs> and it's split level. They, they oh, yeah. The school split level. So the really? cost of renovating the or, or, or making it handicap accessible is it's expensive. No, that school, no. So you have another elementary school there. A much more modern elementary school, yeah. The school that you're closing is was what? 19, kind of school? 1913. So it's a real elementary school, oh, yeah. And it was an elementary school and they closed it because they built a new school? Yeah. It was elementary school, then it was town offices, then it was police department, and then it was uh, storage, essentially. <laughs> uh, but it was 1913. It was a, essentially two rooms upstairs. and then So the ADA upgrade would have killed the project, basically. Was, it, would, it, it makes it more expensive, yeah, yeah. for sure. If you are offered the position of town administrator in Hamden, how would you um, build relationships with the community and um, communicate and give them the heads up? So I've always had an open door policy with uh, with department heads and the public. Um, I see my view. I see the, the town administrator role as a resource 
uh, you know, not only working with the select board, but a resource for all the boards and committees and residents too. That's, that's how I think the role is most effective. Um, so we have a, just ways that I would think about it. We have a, um, we have a, like a local paper called the Waitley Scoop. I would, if there's something similar to that, I would want to put in like a introductory letter or something to the town, you know, well, uh, not welcoming myself, but welcoming them to come in and see me. Um, maybe something on the website. I don't know what the, and I would, I would, I guess, look for some guidance from people who have been here for a while as the, you know, the best ways to, to, to reach out to people. So. Uh, how do you get along with the select one? Good. How do you get I'm still there. <laughs> how do you get along with the selectmen if the board decides one thing and then someone like me comes along and says, "Don't pay attention to those other two guys." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would that would cause some that would cause some conflict for sure. Because the uh, select board would would take action based on two votes, right? <laughs> so. Um, I would suggest that we have another meeting to yeah. talk about whatever the issue is. Because we don't have a five member board. <laughs> so communication. Yeah. yeah. We talked about grant management, right? We talked about the uh, planning and development. Traffic light. Huh? Traffic light, we covered that. We, traffic, we covered the traffic light. Just a little note of fact, we don't have any traffic lights. Or, or Ramos. Right, I, I heard that. Or, or, so, so Mass DOT is all out of your hair then? No. No. They were no. actually paying for a new bridge. Oh. He was, well, that's that's the good way. <laughs> what well, we didn't even know was that. Yeah. <laughs> they <laughs> recently you. reduced one of our bridges to one lane. So, but we do uh, we do get money from uh, casino mitigation. Yep. Uh, and, uh, trust. Uh, so we weren't we didn't make the first cut, which is odd because the spokes of the wheel around Springfield were the only spoke that wasn't funded in the first round. But we did make the secondary funding, so we did get a little something that we can use. Yeah. But only, you know, adjacent to what they consider the route going through. But we do get some money. And that's part of the, as Don talked about, you know, the grant things that we are always looking for. Bob has been terrific in getting grants and looking at possibilities. You know, he has a role index, if you will. Yeah. You know, you've got a long history in different commissions and on the board. Hopefully you have as many contacts. Obviously, coming into a new area, it might be a, a different thing. Yeah. You know, you're coming down from the Hampton area. So. And you're, how many hours, what's your schedule like? Uh, 40 hours. Really? So it's, it's 40 hours with um, flexibility on Fridays depending on what night meetings happen during the week. But the expectation is that it's 40 hours. Monday through Friday with flexibility on Friday. Yeah. When we, are the meetings up there? Uh, the second and last Tuesday of each month. That's select board and then, you know, when we kick up with finance committee and personnel and capital planning, um, finance committee is usually the opposite Tuesday. Hmm. Um, so it's a busy season, as you know. Where does um, Wheatley's revenue come from? You know, um, being a small town, you know, 1,600 people or so, you said. Yep. Is it mostly tax revenue? It is, it's heavily dependent on tax revenue. Um, we have two, we, three or four larger uh, companies. So Yankee Candle has a, the Yankee Candle uh, factory is actually in Wheatley. Um, and there's a company called Covestro, which is a subsidiary of Bayer the Bayer Pharmaceuticals branch there. And then Berkshire Gas has a, a, a truck to pipe distribution facility that's heavily, uh, it generates a lot of tax revenue. Would you say that the, mm -hmm. on their question, I think we're in the, gosh, 90 to 10 percentage in terms of residential versus commercial. Would you say you're there or maybe even a little yeah. better on commercial? Oh, uh, they're about 80, 20. Okay, if we look at good. RL versus mm -hmm. CIP, it's it's around 80-20. It's not different. exactly, but it's... Split I think rate it's, or still single rate? <laughs> oh, geez. Oh. Uh, 
In the last three years, there's been contentious discussions, but it's split as it stayed a split rate. Oh, it's a uh, not split rate, uh, single, single rate. Single rate. Huh. Yep. Contentious between the assessors and select board, or uh, between um, a select board member and the business community. Oh. Yeah. Watch that meeting. <laughs> Is there any solar in Whaley? Yeah. Yep. A lot of solar. Um, there are. There's one, two, three. There's four. What what I would consider large scale. Mm -hmm. uh, Former meaning farm under land. five acres. Um, yes. Yep. Actually, still owned by the farms. Actually, um, and we're actually we actually received a. Um, an MVP grant, we're in the process of putting a solar array on the town office's roof. Hmm. It's an 87 kW system with, with battery storage. Um, MVP so, pay for that? Yeah, we, really? we spun a good deal. Um, so MVP is paying for the whole for the whole project. It's three hundred thousand dollars. What do you guys do for trash up there? Uh, transfer station. Town owned. Yeah, trucks out. Yep, yeah, transfer station, and it's trucked out to. Casella in Holyoke, maybe. Is it an enterprise one or is it? The transfer station is not an enterprise one. Hmm. We have one enterprise fund, it's our water department. Do you have a lot of that kind of water right? in part of the town? And, yes, in part of the town. There is. I think it's only 400 customers. And that was due to any reason or? Yeah, it was due to uh, pesticide contamination. Uh, it's on the eastern part of town, all the, in the, 60s, seven, it might have been the late 60s, early 70s. They had, uh, um, right. it was a popular potato uh, pesticide that you put on potatoes mm -hmm. and it contaminated all the shallow wells. Mm -hmm. So the town is had to borrow. 400 roughly? I think it's around 400. Where's that fed from? Is it wells or is it reservoir? Yeah, it's yeah, deep wells. Deep wells? Yeah. Right along 91, actually. <coughs> but is, is PFAS something you guys are talking about now? Or? Yeah, we've, um, so we've signed up to participate in the settlements. Um, so, oh. um, that's something we'll get to. <laughs> but there's, yeah, there's, there's been some, uh, several lawsuits against the, the manufacturers, 3M and whoever. Really? And they've, uh, they've entered into billion dollar settlements, I think. Well, I mean, yes, but do you have Contamination from PFAS. So we have the town wells or local wells. Yeah, we have detectable limits, but we're not over the threshold. Twenty. Okay. Yeah. Twenty parts per trillion or something. Like Twenty. Yeah. yeah. We're we're going through that right now. We had a couple of bits, but now they're below the threshold. But it's around the transfer station where DEP is making us do the testing. Mm -hmm. Closed land. The the solar you said they're, they're still using it for agriculture. So is it is it that? Agriculture, agri, agri solar thing. Um, one of them, one of them is, I, I think they use the the energy at the greenhouses. The other ones, I think, feed directly into the, the power grid. We have we have eight. Eight. What what have you oh, said? The highest per capita. Good. Didn't you tell us before it was the highest per capita? Yeah, we have the highest per capita. We have eight. Oh, so that's a good potential. Thing. Another one wants to be built. Yeah, pilot payments. I hope. Yeah. yeah, that's something. I would say if somebody actually looked at what the offset was to the tax to any potential tax increase, you know, we are collecting hundreds of thousands. Yeah, yeah. in tax payments from these plants. So yeah, there has been some offset. Yeah, for what's happening there. And one of them is on town owned land on a cat land, bed, which is pretty typical throughout Mass. Yeah. What, what's, what have you done up there with uh, internet service, fiber, you know, fiber, running fiber optic cable? Is, has that been an issue up in the. It has not. Um, it, so it's a Comcast town. Okay. And Comcast has done a pretty good job of covering the town there. Okay. They actually switched off of. So the town was actually part of the Mass Broadband Institute when they hooked up all of the anchor institutions. Mm -hmm. It was actually cheaper for us to switch to Comcast and get better speeds with Comcast and to go through the MBI, fortunately. Aren't you looking at the contract right now? I think I, yeah. I hear you're talking about 
same day we are Solomon. Yeah, that's who that's who did it previously. Yeah. But I think the ten year is up in twenty six. Twenty twenty six, I think. What do you want to know from us? Uh, a company car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one there anyways. Charging yeah, what about your commute? You know, if you got the job here. It was 40 minutes. Wait, it was 35. But I guess that's on the... It's going to be oh, hit or oh, miss. So you're from Southampton to Whaley's. It's 35. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it took you 45 today, you said? It took me 41. We stopped and got coffee, so I can't go with that. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it, it, Google Maps tells me it's 41. Yeah. But that's assuming traffic's nice. Yeah. So You'll find shortcuts. Yeah. It also tried to take me across the pike to, to Ludwell <laughs> and then down yeah. that way, but I'll figure out which, which way works best right. at which time of day. Do you have questions for us? Um, the, one of the bigger questions I had was just about priorities of, of the town, but I think we sort of talked about those already. So We have priorities. We have a couple of building projects, potential building projects. So. Uh, fire station, the senior center, uh, gonna have to do something with the town hall event. So we may have a we may have a new regional agreement coming with the schools. We have a water issue that we need to take care of. Um, and, and fiber then, optic. And work. then in the second week. <laughs> <laughs> so we have those things going on. Yeah. Uh, Cool. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> sounds sounds busy. Sounds busy, yeah. yeah. So if you're looking for a split level antiquated building. You got it. Yeah. I'm trying to get rid of one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything else? We get to, did we cover everything that the board is, is interested in hearing about? And I think so. Good. Yeah. Anything else that you would like to? Relate to us that we may not have asked. They might be on your your criteria, your skills. Um, I think I think my view of I I just want to share again my my view of TA position is a little bit different than you know a traditional view. I think that the town administrator should be a resource for for all boards and committees. Really, uh, I obviously work with the select board primarily and and run the day to day operations, but. Um, you know, I, I I talk a lot with the planning board, zoning board, cons comp. I get a lot of the meeting law questions, procedural questions. You know, um, I just think that's really important in a small town to to have those extra skills to to really help run the town. You know? <coughs> because you know, if it's five minutes or ten minutes discussion and looking up something, so that the you know board of committee doesn't get you know, there's not a lawsuit from you know. You know, five months from now, then it's definitely time well spent. So um, that I I take that that role seriously. I, I think you know it, it's the, the town administrator. So. so you want a town where long claims budget is smaller than the snow and ice account? That's yes. Account. Yeah. We want a, a small legal budget. That's for sure. Who do you use for uh, legal? Uh, currently, it's KP Law. You say. Yeah. No, no. They just picked up uh, Wolverham. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who's used? Who do you? Doherty. Doherty. Yeah. Yeah. I think Bacon still has a Munson. Uh, what's the other big firm? Is it Robinson? Robinson, yeah. Robinson, yeah. Robinson Donovan Madden. Yeah. yeah. One, of the, one of the attorneys just moved to Waitley, actually, from yeah. a friend of Doherty. Oh, to Waitley. She's actually on the finance committee. That's how I know her. And very good, Paul. Yep. Okay. So our plan is to uh, make a decision January 29th and uh, let us let you know. Is that going to be an issue with your current? No. I should give them 30 days notice. That's what my contract says. They know you're interviewing? Uh, yeah. Uh, specifically Hamden, I'm not sure, no. but they know that I'm looking at different you're looking opportunities. Your answers, yeah. I mean, as you said at the beginning, they're looking to follow up. Yeah. That would actually dovetail with the kind of 
Can we do a look at this as they were on term? Yeah, I would. I mean, that's important to us. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to do this every two years. I mean, Bernie loves billing, but he doesn't want to come back here right away. Well, Zoom <laughs> allows me to. Uh... <laughs> With Bill. <laughs> well, you've been in, you've been in Whaley for seven plus years. Yeah. And you were in PB uh, Berkshire Regional for six, six seven, six, six, seven. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's important to us. You know, it shows to Absolutely. the town, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, stability is important. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Good. All right. What's well, that? Good. Thank you. Thank right. you. Yeah. Leave. Any other route going home? I know, right? I got to head up to Northampton actually, so I got to find the best way. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You talk to Brenda. Give you. I'm just going to take. I will. Brian. Yeah. Will do. Will do. Hit the bathroom. Yeah. Great, great, great. Yeah, bring it in. A great, a great add to our finance committee. Which is, I was on uh, the mom. I was on the committee with me, Eric Wasser. Yep. Finance committee. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Deal. What's this? What's this? Going? It's Building back it up. Oh, wow. That's why I said door back, back it up. It's a song. Back it up. Is it the fire alarm? Do something sooner rather than later. That's a fire alarm? No, that's the lift going up to the uh, stairs. It's going up to oh. the library. Someone's actually using it? They use it a lot, actually. <laughs> we have several residents that have been using it. Okay. All right. Excuse me, Mr. Davenport. Yes. What was that gentleman's name? Uh, I don't know. I don't Domino, D O. Yep. Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah, Discussing what aged out means. Aged out. Is there a, a, a term limit there for age? For police officers are as right. Would you want pizza delivery? <laughs> no, aged out. The police officers are right. Really. We talked about. You talked about aging out. I don't know what, what aged out means. What age out? Yeah, sixty-five. For you guys, right? Well, we're fifty-five. Eighty. Well, if you got um, thirty-two years of service, fifty-five. Um, how are you doing? Are you? Okay. Let me choose Ryan McNutt. Hold it. You go there. You go there. From where? Here? There. Right there. All right. Here we go. Right there. Right there in the water bottle. Right Ryan McNutt. Nice to meet you. Uh, yeah. Very nice of you. Good morning, actually. I'm Ryan at a uh, fundraiser for District. Attorney Galuni. Galuni, thank you. I always say Guliani. I don't know. Ooh. 
That's the that's the former New York guy. I don't know. Yeah. I just wanted to repeat it. <laughs> How about the fibula rate? There we go. What? <laughs> yeah, right. We all have our favorite right. word. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so Thank you, Ryan, for coming in. Yeah, thank you interest, for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. Donna Hamden, uh, you met the board here, and this is Laura McCormick. Our nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Administrative assistant, and we've got a couple of people here. Hello. Jane Bedinkowitz, Board of Health. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Scott Trombley, our chief of police. And a former Palmer officer. Yes, correct. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. And dad's a, I thought you were going to oh. Brown, just a resident. Very nice to meet you. It's not just a resident. Just a and on Zoom, and on Zoom, we have Michelle Boudreau, who's the chairperson of, of the regional school committee and assistant treasurer here. Oh, great. And John Plaster is the chairman of our water commission. Uh, Wendell Hulbert, our building uh, inspector. And who else we got there? Mm -hmm. Oh, commissioner. Well, 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 commissioner. Yeah. Right. He's, he's okay. got the shirts now. Okay. Yeah. He's got the shirts now. Say commissioner. Okay. Oh, does he? Okay, good. He bought him a shirt. We didn't get a shirt. He bought him a, No, we, we don't get, get a shirt. shirt. Yeah. No, get the shirt. All right. All right. Once again, thank you for your interest in the town and, uh, and, and coming in in the evening. Uh, so, for, I guess, first of all, give us a short description of your experience and what makes you interested in the town of Hamden? Uh, well, thank you very much again for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Ryan McNutt. Uh, I'm an experienced uh, municipal manager and administrator. I started out in the town that I grew up in, the city of Fitchburg. Uh, a young lady uh, ran for mayor and she won. And I worked on her campaign and I wanted to get more involved in the city. I had already been doing some volunteer work and she recognized uh, my capability through that volunteer work and asked me to be her chief of staff. And from there, uh, I've had the opportunity to uh, supervise department heads. I stood up a department in the city and then I branched out and became a town administrator and a town ma a city manager and a town manager. Uh, so I enjoy this work. I love this work. And um, I've worked in some very uh, tough communities, communities that were known for, um, you know, going through managers very quickly. Um, I did a lot for those communities. And uh, I'm looking for a, a place in Western Mass. I live in Western Mass. I love living in Western Mass. Uh, that is, um, similar to to where i live and in a quiet you know place has has some stuff going on um hamden is very attractive to me for those reasons and don't discount your experience as u.s army veteran yes i and i also served in the u.s army massachusetts army national guard thank you for your service and for that uh, lancaster wasn't bob also ta in lancaster i don't think i would i don't I don't think so. I could be wrong. We were just only, talking about that. There's only 350 cities and towns. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> yeah. um, how many people in Lancaster? 8,500. So closer to our size than the other two. Mm -hmm. What what's the difference between what do you see as the difference between town manager and town administrator? Oh, there is there's a fair amount of difference. So it, it's really all written into the bylaws or charter of your community. And in uh, many uh, communities, um, a town manager is more of an executive. It, some communities can have a manager and a select board and still have town meeting. Uh, and in some communities, they go right to a city form of government and they do away with town meeting and they have a legislature and the town manager is the chief executive. So that was the situation in Palmer. It was a city form of government. Uh, a town administrator is an agent of a select board. So the select board are the chief executives and the administrator is uh, more of a professional uh, who facilitates getting the projects done. 
uh, the day-to-day -day administration, uh, helping the select board prepare for town meeting, prepare for the annual budget, uh, things like that. So I guess my question is, how do you feel about being, going from town manager to town administrator? Well, I've been a town administrator before, um, so I'm familiar with it, and I, I really have no compunctions one way or another. Um, so, you know, the fidelity to the bylaws and the fidelity to a charter are up to the elected officials. And I've seen elected officials uh, that don't understand or appreciate their own form of government, and they sometimes work uh, around the statutes, and that can be frustrating. So in some respects, the town manager role can be more clear in terms of what your actual authorities are. And how, how, what's your management style in terms of, you know, we have a pretty decentralized government you know independent elected clerk and collector and treasurer and we have a bunch of boards planning boards assessors and all that are elected and how is you know, we approach to them being so i have a lot of experience working with decentralized government even in palmer as much as the town's government was centralized under the town manager the town itself was four different villages that had very distinct identities uh, folks in Bondsville thought of themselves as residents of Bondsville, not Palmer, uh, has four water districts, three separate fire departments. The manager has no authority over any of those things, but I had to work very closely with all of them uh, to get stuff done. Economic development, regulatory issues, um, you know, different sustainability issues, helping those districts uh, and departments when they had challenges that this, the town had resources that they didn't have. Um, so, you know, I work collaboratively with people. I look for professionals, folks that want to do the right thing. And, um, you know, we, we, we work in a consensus building and collaborative environment for the larger mission at hand. Mm -hmm. Did you name the four, four <coughs> villages? Well, I mentioned Bonsville, Thorndike, uh, Three Rivers, mm -hmm. and Depot Village. What? <laughs> That's technically what Palmer's called. Oh. Depot Village. <laughs> nice. Looks like what they used to call East Little Bishop's Corner. Mm -hmm. East Little. Yeah. You had mentioned that um, you had interest in Hamden. You want to stay in Western Mass. Mm -hmm. um, what do you know about Hamden that you like? And how does your experience with what you've previously worked on um, help Hamden's interest in you know, projects going forward that we have. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've done a lot of research into, into your town and, and the issues that are front and center for you. Um, so I know uh, there's a government study committee. There's town hall space needs issues. Uh, there's a senior center uh, space needs uh, review coming up with potentially some expansion of the senior center. Mm -hmm. Um, there is, I mean, I don't want to, I, I, I don't think I can get into the details of it, but I'm familiar with, uh, this controversial, uh, land project where some private parties own some land and they're looking, you know, they're looking to put up storage, um, uh, businesses and, you know, that may or may not, um, some of those things are in court. Uh, I've dealt with some of those issues in the past. So um, I've done a town hall uh, expansion project that was one of my very first projects in the town of Lancaster. It was a four and a half million dollar uh, town. Uh, we took a middle school and turned it into a new town hall. Uh, that was a- How long ago was that? That was 2015, 2016. That'd probably be dollars now. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, I also have the experience in 2012, uh, my office was on the second floor of City Hall in Fitchburg, mm -hmm. and we were given uh, a week to vacate the entire building because a bunch of roof trusses had broken. And the building and uh, building commissioner came mm -hmm. in and said, this building needs is going to be condemned. Mm -hmm. So I I've been involved as a chief of staff to a mayor of moving all the departments out of a city hall, finding them new space around the city, uh, setting them up, getting them back up and operating. I mean, that, that was an extraordinary challenge. Uh, I've, I've had 
numerous conversations with uh, your current manager, uh, Bob Markle. I, I actually know him very well, and uh, he's he's clued me in on on the like I said, the issues that are current and front and center for you folks, and and I feel like um, all of those are within my experience set. Yeah, like what did he say about us? <laughs> How many people were in, say, Lancaster, Lancaster and Fitchburg, uh, residents? Residents? Yeah. Uh, Lancaster had 8,500, and, and Fitchburg is a city of about, uh, it's about, it's 50,000 people. I, I think the census has it at, in the 40,000s, but we all know that not everybody answers the census. So Hamden is substantially smaller than all the communities that you've, uh, you've been in, right? Well, I wouldn't say substantially. I mean, your population is, you know, but there's advantages. So some of the dis there's advantages and disadvantages to different populations of towns in terms of the resources that are available to you. Um, and I actually find that there's a greater chance to get some resources if you're a town under 12,000 people. So the, you know, 8,500 versus, you know, roughly, 7,6500 people it is basically the same in terms of like administration and governance. What's your experience with shared services? I mean, we're a town of 5,000, mm -hmm. so we can't do it all. We have regional Oriented dispatch, we have uh, shared health services. Um, regional dispatch. We, we mm -hmm. job out our, we job out our ambulance service. Mm -hmm. What's your experience with things like that? Um, yeah, I'm probably, sorry, I just... Shared services, like for different... Heck, we're looking with, uh, could be potentially sharing a conservation agent if we can mm. ever get a town to go along with us. Yeah. You know. um, Mr. Rivers, did you say that you're not in dispatch? Well, we have regional dispatch. Oh, okay. I was okay. adding on yeah. shared services. So I have a lot of experience with that. Um, I w used to be a board member to a regional emergency dispatch, the Joba Regional Valley Dispatch. Uh, Lancaster was a, a member component of that. It looked that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, did the whole thing, yeah. Yeah, it's very successful, incredibly successful. Uh, Lancaster was facing a million dollars plus in terms of all of their radio upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, the costs of the personnel and the operations was approaching about $300,000 a year. The assessments from Neshoba Regional Valley, uh, Neshoba Regional Dispatch, when I left, were $172,000. So incredible savings mm -hmm. and incredible uh, cost escalations to you know predictability. Right. Um, I just recently managed a four-town uh, regional animal control, uh, Munson included. Mm. Uh, I built, uh, well not built, but I managed the project to get the four member town regional animal control a new facility, which is in Munson. Uh, during the pandemic, so I, I led the town of Palmer through the pandemic. Uh, I uh, started from scratch a 11 town regional vaccination clinic. We vaccinated over 8,000 people. Uh, that had, uh, I mean, I put this in a uh, closed school, the Converse Middle School in the town of Palmer, in the gymnasium. I had to hire everybody, nurses, administrative people, have emergency services there, uh, had to redo the parking lot, stripe all the parking spaces. Uh, I had 30 employees just at this vaccination site separate from the town. Obviously you're familiar with uh... What Bob does with grants, nobody is like him, I will say. But what's your experience been with grant administration, going out, finding different sources? Uh, I have a lot of experience with grants. That's something that I've done from day one. Uh, I, I can't say that I've gotten $8 million for a community like Bob has. Um, that's impressive. Uh, I know where he did get the money. Um, and that is something that I do see as a great resource for the town of Hampton is rural development. So my very first opportunity was when I was, the mayor had asked me to stand up a housing division within the community development department in Fitchburg, because this was at the height of the great uh, recession, foreclosures. Fitchburg was suffering, you know, 600 to 900 foreclosures a month. Hmm. Um, 
but we had affordable home ownership opportunity money grants that, that I administered. And so right when I started up that housing division, uh, Attorney General Martha Coakley uh, put out a bunch of money that they got when they sued all the banks that caused the you know, Great Recession. And uh, she, put that, she put out about $54 million. Uh, you could apply for up to half a million. I got $250,000 on my first application. Um, from there, uh, I became a town administrator in Lancaster. Uh, we got a $980,000 MassWorks grant to put in 1,100 feet of sewer. Uh, we had four businesses uh, that were, they were chemical operations and they were operating with sewer, uh, septic systems and they were going, they were being um, um, mandated to tie into a public sewer system or else they were essentially going to have to relocate. Um, so this kept them in town and actually reduced some of their costs so much so that they were able to add about 100 jobs between the four of them. Uh, these were like engineering jobs too, not, you know, these are well-paying jobs. Um, from, from there, uh, we got uh, another $400,000 from MassWorks to, so we were working on a waterline expansion project in North Lancaster uh, because there was no water access up there. Everything had to be on septic systems. So you couldn't even put in a Dunkin' Donuts. And they wanted that because that's where mass, mass youth soccer was. You know, I mean, when they have a tournament, a town of 8,500 people has 11,000 people show up to go to these tournaments. And, you know, they, they wanted a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> so so we got, we got the, we got the uh, money to plan the water line. The water line uh, was going to eventually cost over $7 million, but you have to start with planning and design to get any future grant money. So we got the $400,000 to be able to do the planning and design. Um, from there, uh, we got a, a bunch of other smaller grants, like technical assistant grants, mm -hmm. uh, to, to plan to do some other projects. Um, then I went up and became a city manager in New Hampshire and got millions of dollars in grants when I was in New Hampshire. Uh, easily three or four million. I was trying to add it all up, uh, preparing for this interview. And um, some of them were for private individuals because we were re revitalizing a main street in a downtown. And they had a lot of vacant buildings uh, that had housing on the upper floors and commercial on the bottom floors, mixed use. But the housing was incredibly deficient. The absentee landlords had not invested in those properties since the day they bought them in the 90s. You know, and this is now into the 2000s. Some of those places didn't have second means of egress. Uh, they didn't have adequate or working uh, smoke alarm systems or smoke detectors. So um, we had to use the Board of Health and the building department and the fire department. Um, and we were able to change the ownership of buildings. Uh, there was a local, a couple of local property owners that were interested. They lived in town and they wanted to revitalize these properties. So we got them grant money to be able to buy them. They turned into gut rehabs. The entire assessed value of the downtown of Claremont, New Hampshire was about 5.5 million. One of those buildings alone was an $11 million gut rehab. I mean, that's over 100% the assessed value of the downtown being reinvested. Um, so uh, let's see, from there uh, in the town of Palmer, most uh, right before um, I, I left Palmer, we got a $1.35 million CDBG grant, competitive grant, uh, to redo uh, a neighborhood where we had just redone a park. So sidewalks, water, sewer, we were, we're going to redo all of the underground utilities in that neighborhood. Uh, and then the very last thing, it's not a grant, um, but it took me a year and a half and there was a lot of chances uh, for it to not succeed, but a very generous person uh, who passed away donated their estate to the Palmer Public Library. And uh, it, like I said, it took me about a year and a half. I had to be the executor of this estate in probate, but it was $3 million for the Palmer Public Library. Well, uh, putting together the budget, how, how are you doing? 
how do I do it? Well, it all depends on sort of the, the structure of the community. And uh, I've, I've done a budget in pr practically every possible way that you could put together a municipal budget. Um, I've worked with elected finance committees, right? Where I'm the town administrator. So I'm just a, a voice as part of the process. And then we as a team uh, bring that to town meeting. And then as a city manager and a town manager, I, I've put together, you know, budgets, um, you know, on my own with, with my finance team as part so of- the department heads would give you their, what they thought they needed. Well, so it depends on on the situation, sort of the macro situation. Sometimes the the administrator or manager or select board put out guidance to the department head. You know, give me a level funded budget with just contractual increases. Uh, give me a budget where you would in, how would you invest if you had you know two point five percent increase in your budget or a five percent increase in your budget, and then so they take that guidance and they put together their their first draft. And then, you know, they come in and sit with either, you know, my team as part of my administration or the elected finance or, or you know, the, the structure of that community. And then from there, we refine and refine and until it's ready to um, be brought before the board that has the authority over passing that budget. Collective bargaining? Lots of, ex I have over a decade experience in collective bargaining. Um, I'm you know, at the point where I rarely, if ever, need to actually have labor council with me. I, I, I can pretty much do all of the collective bargaining on my own. So you're now your now your town administrator, and Sally in the clerk's office has got a problem with Billy in the accounting office, and Sally comes to you and says, you know, Billy doesn't do his work. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't come in on time. He gets more money than me. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, I, I say the I, I would I would look into this. I mean, your your concerns. Uh, I appreciate your bringing your concerns to me. Let me take a look at this and and find out, you know, what the true story is. Do most of the communities you worked in have they had salary schedules for? Uh, charts, you know. Yes, uh, yes, and they 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 constantly need to be revised. It's there are things that go stale very quickly, especially in the the tempo that we're seeing in the world today. Mm -hmm. So yes, every community has had uh, wage scales. I've gone through. I've done numerous wage studies. Um, they're they're not that hard to do. The challenge is getting accurate data from other communities because everybody's busy. So you you send out requests for information from other communities so that you can you know use them as comparables, and you you kind of have to sort of badger people to get you back the information. How do you how do you get people involved? You know, a town like ours, we we have vacancies. All the towns will have vacancies on boards and committees and stuff that they need. Yeah, you know, good people. There are good people in the towns to do it, but they just you can't seem to get them motivated or energized to do it. That's a, that's yeah, a that, that I agree with you, and that is a perennial challenge. I mean, that's been a challenge. I, I don't think there's anything today that's different from when I started 12 years ago. There were people they had lots of vacancies in Fitchburg. What I do uh, is I identify when we absolutely need something for a crucial board, right? We're doing a project and this is a regulatory board and it doesn't have a quorum or, you know, we're trying to do something. So I, I work around, um, you, you have to be creative, right? So maybe the term length is, is you know, somebody doesn't want to serve for three years, right? just do this thing for the town just do this thing for us just participate in this one thing and then if you resign no harm no foul right so you, you got to dial down into what people are looking for what people might have the time to do where they might want to contribute and then you got to make it easy for them and that might be outside of you know the normal expectation <laughs> As human resources manager, being town administrator, if the selectmen set a policy within the town, and an elected board or an appointed board 
isn't following policy. Mm -hmm. um, what would be your method of handling that? Uh, so this is something that I do see a lot, um, especially, in, so in Lancaster, for example, lots of different independent boards um, and, you know, staffed by volunteers that were very dedicated to the town. Um, some of them didn't see themselves as beholden to the select board, even though traditionally the select board should be at the top of the hill and, you know, everybody else. Um, for example, the uh, DPW was a Bureau of Public Works and the highway superintendent answered to the Bureau of Public Works, not necessarily to the select board. So as administrator, I don't have those, I don't have authorities over those boards, right? So I, I have to try to build the relationships that if you guys are frustrated as a select board with what another elected uh, or, or appointed board is doing, and I mean, I have to try to be the person in the middle of the road that can keep both sides talking to each other, right? So it's much more mediation than it is any type of um, direction or, or anything like that. Bernie? How do you, um, when you're preparing the budget, mm -hmm. uh, I'm always curious as to the people who prepare the budget, the process that they um, use to determine how much money is available. I guess I'm wondering, as well as the sort of the long-term effects of some of the spending decisions that might be being made, what do you do in terms of uh, fiscal forecasting and working with the board and the finance committee to understand the trajectory of the, the town's finances. Mm, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you have to do financial forecasting. Yeah, you have to figure out how, what, have, what have you been spending? What have you been spending it on? And what is the growth, uh, you know, the cost escalator of those things, right? What are your revenue sources? Where, where are they traditionally coming from? You know, right, for towns, excise taxes are a big one. Right? But there's been changes in, in behavior about how people buy automobiles. That can significantly affect a town. I've seen towns that you know, bring in a million dollars a year in, in excise tax. What happens if you have $700,000 one year because people weren't able to buy new vehicles? And we just went through a period where new vehicles were very rare. So you have to try to look at trends and then you have to financially forecast. I, I, I don't go usually beyond five years, three to five year forecasts, I think, you know, retain their accuracy, you know, don't get stale, but you have to look at, you know, new growth. What is the typical new growth? You know, for example, Lancaster, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Town of Palmer is a $42 million budget, right? I put together that budget with my um, town accountant uh, and all my department heads in, in the town council. Uh, but the new revenue available to the town in any one year was is approximately $650,000. So then you have a regional school, Pathfinder. You have the regular district school, Palmer School System. That takes about 57%. Um, and then, so you, you got to look at what you have after everybody else takes their first bite of the apple. How much of the apple is left? Um, what, is, what is the opportunity uh, to get an apple and a half some, at some point in the future? How much is people's stomachs going to grow to an apple and a half? So that's what I do. Uh, I don't want to steal Craig's question, but uh, how would you become Im uh, immersed in the community? Can I rephrase that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you were offered the position of town administrator in Hamden, hmm? um, how would you um, introduce yourself or involve the community within the happening and kind of give Hamden the heads up, you know, what's happening, going on? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I would take a look at what are the, you know, communities have traditional mechanisms that people receive information. So I would take a look at those and uh, where are the gaps? And I, and I would try to find ways to reach additional people. For example, in the town of Palmer, uh, the town managers, they didn't 
they they kind of you know sat in, in the office and, and they didn't directly I like to get out I really don't like to spend you know I, I mean I'm, I'm in my office to do administrative stuff but other than that I try to get out and be around go to where people are um, you know meet them in their comfort zones uh, I increased uh, social media interactions uh, no lie I mean because I have the analytics tens of thousands of percent uh, you know, again, Palmer, community of 12,000 people, I had something like 20,000 followers on the town's Facebook page. Um, communicate directly with people. I try to, I try to make it humorous, you know, uh, with, within, a, you know, appropriate levels. Uh, anytime I would put out, um, you know, if it, if it was safety information, then you're going to make it, you know, dry and it's safety information because you want the most accurate information to get out. But if it was, you know, something that was not, you know, life or safety issues, I try to add some humor, you know, maybe use a meme or something. Way more people pay attention, you know. Um, so that's, uh, I like to get out and visit businesses. I did lots and lots of ribbon cuttings of, of new businesses in Palmer and, and in other communities. Um, I'm, I'm happy to make uh, public access uh, television shows, right? Uh, in, you know, if, sort of like uh, Zach Galifianakis between two ferns, right? You just sit down with the administrator. Sometimes you sit down with a department head. You introduce them to the public. You have a conversation, and um, yeah. So yeah, I have to look for where uh, folks are getting information and where they're not, and they could be receptive to getting information. So you say you kind of have like open door policy as well? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yes. I literally did. Um, if you've been to Palmer Town Hall, it's just one floor and it's just kind of this long hallway. The town manager's office is literally the first door coming into one of the entrances. Uh, I always made sure that door was open. So, I mean, people could come and see me before they'd even get to the executive assistant. I was more the gatekeeper for them. Are the other stuff going on? There's a meeting at six o'clock. Oh, uh, we're meeting. Gotcha. We have a time constraint. The agenda is going to be posted by six, so she's going to go. <laughs> or else, someone will say that wasn't forty-eight hours. Oh, my gosh, you know? oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Keyboard warriors. I, I've been there. I, I've, sure. I've I've missed. Uh, I, I've definitely missed some meeting deadlines, and you got to reschedule the meeting. It's painful. Oh. Uh, you you learn from those mistakes. Did the towns you work in have master plans? Oh, absolutely. Yes. And I, and I actually been involved in uh, about three master plan processes. Uh, and in Palmer, um, we did it $36,000 because we got a grant, $100,000 grant uh, to do the master plan. Uh, we hired a VHB. Uh, we did it. Yeah. We did it all online. It was during the pandemic. We had an amazing, I, it was the best response I've ever had from a community in terms of different folks that you barely ever see or hear from getting involved in the planning process. So your part was only 36 after the grant? Correct. Correct. Well, our total was 130 something. Yeah, yeah, master plans about, cost about 150,000, yeah. Do you it, anticipate that it will have, it won't just sit on the shelf? Will it achieve its desired outcome? Right. Yeah. So, well, you mean in Palmer? You mean any place? Any place, yeah. basically. So, what we did after was create a master plan implementation committee. So there's a, there's a group of folks that go through the master plan uh, and take different bullet points from different chapters, and they make sure that things are moving forward. So, yeah, having a master plan implementation committee, I think, is highly recommended. Are they oh. town? Are they from the different town departments, or are they from the <laughs> it's a combination. So uh, I sat on it ex officio. There was a council member who was a liaison. Uh, there, the planning board had a liaison, and then the rest were were regular uh, residents from town. 
No, we got a stack of people waiting for committee assignments. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I mean, if you don't and you have a specific thing that you want to get done, sometimes you can attract folks that will stay just for the duration of that thing. Yeah. 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 Not open end. Um, I will say this about master plans, though. I, I, I it was pretty humorous. So uh, in the town of Winchingdon, uh, I read their master plan. Um, I was a finalist in that community and their their master their original master plan that what they did in 2001 had expected their population to grow uh, to well over 20,000 people mm -hmm. and the master plan had all these recommendations for this increase in population. Yeah, there were about maybe 700 people 20 years later, mm -hmm. you know, addition, you know, new people in town. Mm -hmm. So. They had to revise that master plan uh, like three times to, you know, walk back some of the assumptions that were made. That was one of the problems with the original master plan in Hamden was that they had looked at our zoning and then did a cookie cutter. Well, you have this much square miles. Hmm. Zoning is this, so if you do, 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 do you can have 17,000 residents. Right, right, right. Even though the side of the mountain goes through half of that thing, you can't build a house there. But yeah. When I moved into town 52 years ago, mm -hmm. there was 4,900 people. Mm -hmm. We have 4,996 now. Right, <laughs> right. So, so making, so making nobody else came after in after moved, they saw him. Yeah. Yeah. Ma making wild assumptions, I, I think, is is no longer part of the master plan, sort of purview but yeah so I've been involved in, in multiple master plans uh, I don't let them sit on the shelf uh, I actually carried around the economic development chapter in Palmer um, with me all the time because you know that that was something that I was very focused on was growing them from six uh, six percent commercial tax base to 12 percent commercial tax base is that what they are now uh, no they're approaching it but I'm surprised that low I mean I yeah, no, they're, yeah, they're, they're still about 82% residential tax base oh. and then a combination of open space and, hmm. you know, they have a fully built out industrial park. Right, right. But now you got four, four water districts here, usually? Yeah. Well, there's technically only three water districts. One of them doesn't have a source of water. They're just a billing bureaucracy. <laughs> wow, you could bill for something you don't have. That's a yeah. great. Plot lines on a map, pretty much. <laughs> right, yeah. Mm -hmm. What was that? Plot lines on a map. Oh, okay. Just zoning. And the, and, you, and the fire departments, three? Palmer has three, yeah. There's three, and they each have their own ambulance service? No, 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 no. So, so this is something, uh, I talked to Bob Markle about this. It's something that I, I want to take a look at here. Um, Palmer has a private ambulance service. Uh, it's called Palmer Ambulance. And uh, they don't charge, they don't have an assessment to the town of Palmer, zero dollars. Um, when I was up in Claremont, New Hampshire, we had a private Golden Cross ambulance. Assessment to the town was $70,000. So, um, you know, paying 300, 300 plus thousand is, you know, something interesting. Um, but no, they, the, uh, the Palmer Fire Departments did not have ambulance services. Oh, I'm surprised at that. Oh, they want them. They're working towards it, but they didn't when I was there at the time. But when you have a Palmer, what's the difference? It's a town department, you're saying? No. no. Is it a private entity? A private Palmer, Palmer it, that was just the name. Uh, it was a private entity. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. So Play what are the words. rates? Hmm? What are the rates then? Are they comparable to municipal ambulances or? Uh, See, the problem with the private, they have to make a profit where the municipal one doesn't, it just makes retained earnings. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've i seen municipal, uh, you know, fire department operated ambulance services go into the red very fast and very deep. I mean, if it's, the thing is, you know, private ambulance services, uh, they bill people. You're right. I, I don't know off the top of my head what the rates were, um, but it can be a challenge if you don't have a good billing administration in a municipal service, uh, or you do a lot of write downs. Uh, you know, 
to get into the red in hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've seen that happen. So, you know, if you if you do end up having, you know, municipal ambulance service, you have to run it like a business and you and you have to um, you know, you have to bring in those retained earnings plus plus an escalator because the costs of everything aren't staying fixed. Well, and then you also have the the town's liability and you have the employees benefits and retirement and mm -hmm. yeah right all the opeb right oh. correct all the post-employment benefits fringe right. yep there's also non-emergency transports that privates do that right right public municipals don't right so you, you had said in that previous conversation when you were in palmer um are you currently not in palmer no i am not the town manager in palmer Would you like to address that? Um, yeah, so again, I, you know, I, uh, Palmer is a community that had uh, gone through town managers very quickly. Uh, I was there for four and a half years. Uh, I did a lot for that community. Again, I was hired primarily for economic development. I, I feel I delivered on that. They have uh, businesses everywhere that I thought was a spot that should have a business but did not. Um, I did a lot of amazing projects for them, uh, just completed a bridge project that was, I think, the most important project to the residents in town uh, that was in Thorndike. Um, but there were things happening uh, at the political level that I was uncomfortable with. I kind of sort of put up with it for as long as I could. Um, but I decided I needed to look on and find a place that I felt was more stable. They have seven, seven members? Seven counselors, correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, seven egos. <laughs> yeah, and you know, if you look at, you know, the job descriptions that, that... I don't like us to think as one, we just consider ourselves the board. <laughs> Yeah, just regular guys. <laughs> but I just wanted to say that you know, you're, for example, you know, Bill Belichick was the uh, head coach for the Patriots for 24 years, and now you know he's moved on. And you know, maybe he wanted to move on, maybe he didn't. That was Bob Kraft's choice. But it's all in the media, right? And everything that we do is in the media, right? To be a finalist here was a newspaper article, so. And if you look at the job descriptions that folks like Bernie put together, what towns want from their manager administrator, the cardinals in conclave don't even expect from their future pope. So, <laughs> so I'm just saying that, you know, the, the, the expectations that as a human being, you could be everything to everybody at every time, I, I think is not possible. Um, you know, I, I've made mistakes in my career. I've learned from them. Uh, I picked myself up and I've moved forward. Um, I've left every community that I've worked in in a better place. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I love this work. I really understand uh, the town of Hamden um, from the research that I've done. I believe it's a combination of getting grants, right? That's radically important here. Um, that goes into the second leg of what I think is important here is sustainability, right? How do you keep what you have with re really fast rising costs and inflation, right? So how do we keep this sustainable? And then basic project management. You have a lot of capital needs projects on deck. Uh, I'm an experienced project manager for municipal capital needs projects. Anything else? No. Uh, questions for us? Um, you know, again, I, you know, I've learned a lot from, you know, Bob, uh, different folks that I've talked to about Hamden. What can you tell me about what you're looking for from your future administrator? I think not just a future administrator, but for, for the board as well. <clears throat> We're a very uh, interesting community in the sense that we we trash what we have here. It's a small community kind of 
you know, Pacton and the border of Connecticut and some bigger towns around us. Mm. And we really like the, the beauty of the community, the serenity of the community. Uh, we have good financial management. Um, our, our stabilization account is great. Our bond rating is great. And mm. we want to continue that. But at the same time, we realize that changes are coming. Uh, we, we're negotiating a new regional agreement. We're well, talking about a new regional agreement with the high school. We have a, you know, a new solar project that may or may not. Mm. Uh, as you know, we have this court case with the self-storage, which is really based upon the fact that the location of it is, you know, most many of the people in town feel is detrimental to the character of the town. That's, of course, we think that. And then as you point out, we have these large term capital needs that we need to get done if we're going to stay in town and keep it for the next you know and we got a master plan going mm -hmm. on. so we got a lot happening but at the same time we like who we are mm. right <laughs> you know? so that goes back to my sustainability comment it goes back like don said we have a great history we cherish our history but we also don't have blinders on either we understand it's the 21st century actually that phrase is kind of torn now that we're yeah. in 2024 <laughs> you know but we understand that new things are going to impact us, but we want to be able to walk into them on our own terms, mm -hmm. yes. not be forced into them. I think we were very fortunate through the leadership of the police chief and uh, you know his predecessor as well, that we got into the best regional shared dispatch that we could mm -hmm. because it protected the interests of Camden, I think, better than mm -hmm. our alternative could have. Mm -hmm. So we're able to choose our path not be forced into it. And I think what we're looking for in a town administrator is how can we be proactive, mm -hmm. just like we're talking about fiber. How can we be proactive for him then to make him the most attractive community for people to want to work and live in? Mm -hmm. And that's important. We don't want to be reactionary, mm -hmm. but ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people move to Hamden because of what it has and what it offers. You know, they, they like their quiet nights and their starlights. Mm. You know, the rural community is what we are and what, what we like. You know, we, we have that mindset of we like to be left alone, but we have a voice. Um, we understand, though, like they mentioned that, you know, 21st century, you know, we, we can maintain that small rural community while still adapting to the future. Yes. So yes. I mean, that's, that's what we're looking for, you know, the partnership in that, bringing mm. that forward. Well, as like I said, I moved to Hardwick. Uh, I love living in Hardwick. Uh, all of the things that you just said are the reasons that I like living in Hardwick, right? I have starlight at night, no light pollution, uh, mice crunching on the snow, uh, bringing my trash out at 10 p.m. is the loudest thing. Uh, so incredibly loud. Um, you worry about bear here, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, there is a yeah, well, you know, I guess a bobcats don't don't put any uh, the bobcat out no, stuff no, and uh, but so I so I'm very much appreciative of that sentiment and uh, that that's where I want to work and that's what I want to work towards. Yep, okay. good thing, huh? Set. Yep. It's a big one. All right. All right. Yeah. Ryan, thank you very much. Uh, Ryan, I just want to tell you that our, our plan is to, you know, consider this individually. We're going to meet on the 29th and probably make a decision by then. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for coming. Puff, the puff of white smoke. Go back to you. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Moose Pop them. <laughs> oh, wow. That was pretty well. Right. Alter boy background, I think, or something. Right. Thank you. Very nice meeting you. Very nice meeting you. Sir? Good luck. Nice to see you. Thank you. We'll select board. Yeah. Ted's the board selectman over there. Yeah, really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> Man, my dog would have gotten crazy. Mine was cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, we really. Uh, we can. I think we can. I think we can. Huh? Wrap up. Right up. Yeah. Quick we're gonna we're gonna postpone your uh, human resource system and hiring thing, Bob, to Monday. I think that goes hand in hand with what you. Yeah, uh, we'll talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. I'm oh, so moved. Second. All in favor? <laughs> You're still uh, working that out, Craig. You know? <laughs> Kill it. You can end it. <laughs> I'm on my roll. Jeez. See you.